you're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. We're back with Gene and Chris on the Paracast this week, where we're going to do something we do every few months, and that is to sit here, assess what's going on in the UFO and paranormal fields, kind of talk shop, talk about the issues that are important to you listeners. As a matter of fact, we always look at the Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com to see the subjects that get action, to get all the discussions. And obviously one is the state of the U.S. economy. We're not a political show necessarily, so I won't get into that. But one thing struck me, Chris, and maybe it's about education. I don't know. But I saw a survey the other day that most people in the U.S. who were surveyed, and surveys can be inaccurate, but let's assume it's a fair survey, most people in the survey did not know what the debt limit means. (laughs) They had no idea. And I think part of it is because the name is misleading. Because they think, well, if you increase the debt limit, you spend more money. And that's not how it works. The way the debt limit works is it sets a limit for how much the Treasury can borrow, if necessary, to pay its bills. So if you set a debt ceiling and you hit that debt ceiling, they can't pay the bills anymore. It's like, for example, you have a credit card bill coming next month or your mortgage, and you need someone to approve your payment of that bill. And if you don't get it, the bill isn't paid. So what happens? Your credit card may be in default. You may get foreclosed on your house. If you get the picture, the debt ceiling, the debt limit is not an approval of more spending. That's done by the U.S. Congress. It's appropriated by Congress. It's like a, a, a credit limit on your credit card. Once you hit that limit, you can't borrow anymore unless you reapply for a higher, you know, a higher credit line. Right. It's not spending more. It is paying back what you owe. And that's the distinction which I think is lost. But the problem is here is that it looks like half the people in Congress don't understand that. Well, I'll tell you, it's really been uh, it hasn't been good for me. I really rely on October for my Grand Canyon tours that I do. And I'm dead in the water. I've lost four lucrative runs up there uh, since this whole shutdown occurred. So it's it's been a little aggravating and uh, frustrating for me, for sure, personally. It's just wacky over there. You wonder how some of these people who are ignorant of the fundamentals of how the country works get elected to public office and they're supposed to run the thing. That's bad enough. The second thing which is confusing here is, I think it's the 14th Amendment, which says basically that the U.S. must pay its bills. So even if the debt ceiling is not approved at the end, would the president not have the authority to say, well, the Constitution says I've got to pay the bills no matter what? And you can't tell me not because that would be unconstitutional. So it could be push come to shove, something like that could happen. It's a wacky world out there. Of course, also it's wacky. They've got this crazy site up for the health care bill. And this is not a question of being for or against it. But, Chris, you would feel this using a Mac as I do. Apple's Safari is not compatible with the federal version of the healthcare marketplace. If states run it, they have their own programming. But the idiots who program the federal version, it doesn't work on Safari for the Mac. Wow, I didn't know that, Gene. That's uh, kind of a Homer Simpson moment there in the the IT department of the federal government. (laughs) Well, they hire these contractors, yeah. who supposedly specialize in building government-related websites. And this is not the first time they had this. When they approved the Medicare Part D prescription drug bill back about nine or ten years ago, it took them weeks to get the websites to work. So yeah. that's the way it works. What can I tell you? Well, it's a wacky world, Gene, and we're right in the middle of it. They're still discussing the Roswell Dream Team nightmare. Oh, boy. <sighs> It's never going to (laughs) end. Drive a stake in that vampire. I think they said that about Aztec. But even with Roswell, have we had enough of Roswell? Every time we try to drop that subject and say, there will be no more discussions of Roswell on the Paracast, 
And then we relent because we're sensitive folks. And we see something interesting, we relent. We bring back somebody to talk about Roswell or on a rare occasion Aztec. And we get a lot of questions from the audience you all want to hear about it. It's a subject you don't want to hear about until you want to hear about it. One of our recent popular shows didn't quite deal with Roswell, but sort of dealt with it. That was Donald Schmidt, who with Tom Carrier wrote this book about the real Area 51, which is actually Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, because supposedly the wreckage from the Roswell crash was brought there. So therefore, that became a ripe topic for discussion in one of our most popular episodes. Of course, a few people were concerned about the qualifications of Mr. Schmidt, not because he worked at the post office, but supposedly because some of his educational credentials were a bit questionable. I don't think, however, as drastic as Phil Imbrogno. No. Well, again, I, I as we said on the show uh, prior to uh, Schmidt coming on, that uh, we had already covered that ground prior to that, and he was still he's still a figure in the field somehow. He's emerged fairly unscathed from that. I was not aware of some of the claims that have been made about his, shall we say, not really even handed dealings uh, with the public about his his educational background and his his work history. Uh, claims that he said he was a medical illustrator. I wasn't aware of those uh, those particular details, but um, if we do have him back on, we promise we'll uh, we'll go ahead and <laughs> and revisit that territory. The thing is, here is reading the book. I thought it was a well done book, well written, and everything. But I thought there was some smoke and mirrors in it, especially the chapter where they were talking about the memory metal, where they spent a lot of time talking about the people, the officers who were around that time, and some of the things that may have been written about them, but they never brought it together. It was a lot of flash and very little substance there. It's just basically recapping a lot of the old rumors, and we don't know. And the thing that still bothers me, Chris, is after all these years, there's not a single person on this planet who would blow the whistle on something. You can say there's a need to know. And we understand that. Maybe there's a wreckage, and we have some people who look at the wreckage and some people who look at the bodies, and they compartmentalize this as much as possible. But if you add it all up, hundreds or thousands of people have to know something. And if they're smart enough to be able to do this sort of thing, they're smart enough to know something about what else is going on. And after all these years, nobody says a thing. We have a few rumors here and there, and some people who claim to be whistleblowers, certainly Philip Corso claimed to know something, but that's it, and that's so questionable, where do you go? Why isn't there one person out there, still alive somewhere, who says, the heck with it, I'm going to talk about it? Yeah, and I, I've been hoping for someone to uh, find a piece of this uh, wreckage or memory metal in their, their attic or their basement uh, in some box of files or something, you would think with all the material that supposedly was gathered up that somebody would have squirreled away a piece or two and uh, it would have been brought forward by now. It doesn't make sense to me at all. I can't believe that our government is competent enough to keep a secret this important for that long. Not that they can't keep secrets for a long time. Like we learned, what, a few years ago that some famous people were spies during World War II. But those weren't really deep secrets. They were rather casual secrets. Right. So it doesn't matter if they were or they weren't. Who cares? But here we are talking about something that is so momentous, it's going to change the course of history. We've got proof that we're being visited by beings from other worlds. We have the wreckage. We have the technology. Where is it gone, man? Yeah. <laughs> Not one single person on the planet... <laughs> even at the end of their lives, they're not going to come out and say, here's the evidence, here's a smoking gun, and there you go. Gene and Chris are talking shop. We haven't figured out which shop yet, but it's not the little shop of horrors, let me tell you. You're in The Paracast. Neighbors, are you tired of dealing with a slow web hosting provider? Well, check out A2 Hosting and their screaming fast Swift server platform. They even have SSDs that load pages 300% faster than the competition. Ready to give your site a speed boost? Well, tell you what, neighbors, 
head on over to a2hosting.com. That's A2, that's number two, a2hosting.com. Check out their Prime Hosting account. And get this, neighbors, they're even giving you an exclusive 25% off discount for all our listeners. 25%. And remember, their Guru Crew support team is standing by 24-7, 365 days a year to answer any of your questions. Now, to get the discount, use the coupon code GENE when you check out. Hi, this is Gary Cooper with Midas Resources Gold and Silver. Government shutdown, inept politicians, entitlements, looming Obamacare. The death of the U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency is what nobody wants to acknowledge. We have a debt bubble that cannot be paid and will eventually crash the dollar. If you're concerned about keeping your money, why not consider storing your wealth in gold and silver? Call me, Gary Cooper, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 130. Together we'll discuss your options of buying gold and silver. Again, the global elite have plans for your money and it doesn't include you. So call me, Gary Cooper, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 130, and we'll discuss your options of buying precious metals. Also, I can send you information on how you can roll over your IRA or 401k into a precious metal IRA. Again, don't get caught with money in your account when the dollar crashes. Call me, Gary Cooper, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 130. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE, 855-340-7283. Not all protein powders are created equal. One World Whey is the first cold temperature processed, 100%, all natural, unrefined, bioactive, grass pasture raised milk whey protein. Far from being another ordinary protein supplement, One World Whey is a full spectrum nutrition power food in and of itself, providing overall life building benefits that touch virtually every human's life that other protein supplements don't deliver on. What are the benefits? Boosts the immune system, anti-aging properties, helps detoxification, helps lose body fat, supports excellent blood sugar levels, excellent for building muscle, increases in energy levels, enhances the feelings of youth, energy for exercise and recovery. Who's it for? Anyone wanting to feel healthy and have energy. Busy people, office workers, growing children, students, teachers, seniors, people recovering from illness, and high-performance athletes. Call 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorldWhey.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. I don't know where I came up with that comment about the little shop of horrors, but sometimes the UFO field can be toxic. I believe, by the way, that none other than Art Bell once said that years ago on the Coast to Coast AM radio show in the old days. He said something about the UFO field being toxic. Then again, he brought on the people who made it toxic. So it's like, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, so if you want to be responsible for the problem that you're complaining about... Stop helping create it. <laughs> that's right. I haven't heard much about the show since it's been on. I know the first week he had the usual offenders, the Stephen Greer and the Richard Hoagland and all that. But since then, I've heard nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Wrong. Mm. I haven't either, actually. It's interesting you should mention that. I should maybe look at some of the uh, guests that he's having on. And uh, it, it does seem like he's just re... Refrying the, uh, you know, his 
his old uh, formula that worked pretty well for him in the 90s. I think he may be a little bit uh, passe now. I think people, are, you know, like our listeners here at the Paracast, they, they want more biting information. They want new things to ponder. And they don't want to hear new wrinkles of the same old stories that have been rehashed now for 20 years. Uh, in the case of Roswell, you know, 60 plus years. So, you know, I think that uh, it's the ground breaking investigators, the theorists, the creative thinkers out there that are going to, I think, move closer to the front here um, in the upcoming few years. And I think people are, are just lusting after something new. And hopefully with all these cell phones that we have out there, I think, Gene, I saw that there's a 41, I think, meg camera phone now that uh, is just phenomenal uh, resolution. Okay, This is the Nokia Lumia 1020 has 41 megapixels, which is more than just about every digital camera on the market, which is good. You get all that extra detail. But as a camera, it's okay because it's not just the megapixels. There's more to a camera than the megapixels, the quality yeah. of the lens and all the other circuitry. Like, for example, we have the iPhone 5S, new one from Apple, in my dirty little hands here because I sold all my old smartphones that I had around the house. I had to sell every one of them to pay for this. So thank me for doing this. It's got a wonderful camera. It's eight megapixels, but what Apple does is make the megapixels larger, makes each pixel larger to capture more light. It's got a double flash on it. So in dim surroundings, it will get the proper color temperature of something. I took a picture nearly pitch black in a bedroom of my dog. I sent you a copy. A beautiful yeah. picture. Of course, the dog is white, but there's no color distortion or anything. Under normal circumstances, 8 megapixels is a lot. But if the camera is easy to use and has good features, you should be able to take some really smart stuff with it. I know the National Geographic magazine has been using these iPhone cameras, and they are making wonderful pictures. So basically, you have in your hand, and you don't have to get an iPhone 5S. I got the iPhone 5C for like $99 in the U.S. with a cellular contract, and they have discounts and everything. You can take high-definition movies with it. It's got image stabilization. You got one of these things, there's no excuse not to be able to take a really first-class movie or still of something strange. But most of the pictures we see, ah, I don't know. Maybe they're using that $50 Android phone or something. I don't know. Well, I think a lot of it is technique. It kind of leads to a question that we have from uh, one of our new uh, posters at forum.theparacast.com. He calls himself Techno Maggot. Maggot? Oh, I like that. It kind of sticks to you. <laughs> yeah, I, it may be Techno Magnet, but uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, he says, Chris, as a video professional, can you explain why there aren't any high-quality, authentic videos or pictures of UFOs with all the new technology available? You would think someone would capture something good by now. I know the UFOs are deliberately elusive, but with the millions of cameras out there, why aren't we getting better evidence? Well, you know, that's a question that's uh, that's going <clears> to <throat> be asked more and more as uh, as the technology races forward, as we, we're describing. And I think it boils down to a few things. First of all, people don't look. Everybody's got their faces buried in their in their cell phones or their smartphones and they're texting and and they're be I think people are becoming less and less aware of their surroundings. By the way, it reminds me of that phrase in Batman Begins, where Liam Neeson tells Christian Bale, Bruce Wayne, you have to be aware of your surroundings, and everybody's looking down at their phone. Exactly. But not up in the skies. They don't look to the skies. Yeah, and that, that's what I tell people. They say, well, how come you've seen so many, uh, had so many sightings? I say, because I look. I'm constantly scanning my environment and, uh, you know, I have my eyes above eye level oftentimes. And, and that's one thing. The other thing is when an event like a UFO sighting, uh, some sort of spectral image in your house, whether it's a shadow person or a ghost, whatever tag you want to put on it, the instant one of these things shows up, it tends to totally throw you into this place of, of disbelief and of you just have this feeling of you're frozen almost. And, it, and this has happened to me on more than a few occasions. And 
I think a lot of times people become transfixed or mesmerized by what they're watching and the automatic assumption to grab a camera is somehow it's it's gone. You know, even even Ray Stanford, who I, I talk about uh, frequently on the show, he he just had a sighting event uh, in Maryland a couple of weeks back, and he was so transfixed by it, he, his camera was right next to him. He didn't grab his camera, which is very unlike him. So even someone who has trained themselves to, to react instantaneously in the face of some inexplicable phenomena, even someone like that can can actually kind of zone out and become transfixed or mesmerized by what they're seeing. A lot of these events are very, very fleeting. They don't have a long duration. So you really have to act quickly. And a lot of times people are just, they just want to watch it so much that they forget to just simply grab their cameras. I think this will change now that we have all these really uh, high quality cameras uh, aboard cell phones now. And I'm I'm hoping that this is going to change. Of course, you wonder here if there's a trickster element around it. And we always have to go back to tricksters. That people see these things and maybe some external force keeps people from remembering, I've got my smartphone in my pocket. I can take it out and shoot a picture, shoot a movie. It'd take me just a second to do that. What well, about that? You're the that's trickster a, that's a good expert. Point. That's a good point. I'm not sure if it's something external. I think it's more uh, involved in a react reaction of a particular witness. And and in terms of quality of pictures, oftentimes when something like this happens, you get really excited and you don't brace you, brace yourself to get a nice steady shot or you're so excited your hand is shaking if you're trying to videotape something. And and oftentimes the blurriness or the, the lack of quality is really operator error. And I, I think that that plays into it as well. And I'm hoping... I'm hoping that with this technology now that's just leaping forward, we're going to see more and more visual evidence. Um, but you would think that we would have had, you know, already seen some, which we have. But, but I think, uh, I think it, there's a lot of room for improvement in people's reaction to these events. We're talking again about image stabilization. More and more of the smartphone cameras have it, which means you could shake it up a little bit and get a fairly stable image, but only a little bit. We got a lot, not a little bit, to talk about. Plenty to talk about. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. If you want to get your website online and you need reliable service, first-class service at the lowest possible price, there's only one place to go. Well, DreamHost has a special promotion with our show where they'll offer you unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, one-click web apps such as WordPress, 24-7 support. You can save over $55. You want to know how? Go to DreamHost.com slash radio, DreamHost.com slash radio. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. An e-cig revolution is sweeping across the country. But is yours American-made? Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig is. Manufactured in Arkansas with 100% USA-sourced ingredients. And when you buy American, you support local jobs. Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig is top quality at an affordable price. The very principle that once drove the American economy. Get great taste with no ash, tar, or smoke. You'll be wondering why you didn't make the change to Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig a long time ago. LaSig.com has everything you need for beginners to the advanced vaping enthusiast with a wide variety of hardware and also imported e-liquid flavors as well. Plus, LaSig smokes the competition with fast, free, same-day shipping, real people customer service, and a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Support our country and become a vapriate at LaSig.com or call 870-525-1440, 870-525-1440. LaSig e-cigarettes for today's modern smoker. 
time and time again. You need to come here and help us. We need assistance. Please. Those we should be able to depend on let us down. Federal and state and local officials saying help is on the way. Will the folks here in Bell Harbor say show me? Don't depend on the government to save you. Take action now so that you're prepared for the next disaster with MyPatriotSupply.com. Get the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more at MyPatriotSupply.com. Call 866-229-0927. We are hurting down here, and we need help immediately. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com mypatriotsupply.com A healthy digestive system supports a healthy immune system. And a healthy immune system protects you against infections and disease. Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse, available at Terragonics.com, is the key to digestive health. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic and is gentle enough to use every day. Pro-EM1 contains three groups of beneficial microbes and enzymes to cleanse and remove toxins, supports weight loss, improves absorption of food nutrients, and aids in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is dairy, wheat, and soy-free, is non-GMO, has all natural certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is never freeze-dried. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Terragonics.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Pro-EM1, the raw probiotic. Hi, my name is Richard Dolan. You're listening to the Paracast. Talking shop with Gene and Chris in the Paracast this week. We've got some great guests, though, scheduled. For the next few weeks, we'll be hearing from Nick Redfern, who has a brand new book out, by the way. And Mm -hmm. we're always anxious to talk to Nick. And a little bit later, possibly the end of the month or early in November... We expect to talk once again to my good buddy, Brad Steiger. So that's going to happen. And we got a few surprise guests in the hopper. And Chris is going to be going to this Paradigm Conference in Minnesota before the winter hits. And maybe he'll grab a few interviews there, right, Chris? Yeah, that would be good. There's going to be uh, be quite a... a a lot of uh, stellar stellar uh, presenters. Uh, this will be my, my chance to actually meet uh, face-to-face Nick Redfern, whom I've never actually really met. And, of course, David Weatherly is going to be there, Micah Hanks, Scotty Roberts, uh, Robert Chalk, uh, uh, Robert Boval. Um, there's quite a lineup, uh, L.A. Mazzulli. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it's next weekend. I was hoping to have my book done by then. I, I'm right at the point of finishing it now. It's now being edited. So, unfortunately, I'm still a little bit behind on it. But... But I'm really looking forward to comparing notes with Nick and David and, and Micah and, and the group and, you know, networking and, and learning some new things. Uh, I, I do plan to attend a, a few of the presentations, which normally I don't do. And I'm really looking forward to it. I go to conventions occasionally, but I'm more of a hermit. You know, I kind of stay indoors. You know, it's just me, the wife and the dog and my computer and my iPhone and her iPad and never the twain shall meet. I'm kidding. I do see people every so often, you know, five or six years I come out of the tunnel, you know. I heard, as a matter of fact, that reminds me of this old legend of this songwriter who wrote this song, you know, everybody's talking about me, can't hear a word they're saying that Harry Nilsson sang. Right. Well, the guy who wrote that song was a real-life hermit. He'd always live in a cave or somewhere, and he'd come out and bring out songs. Of course, that song was used in Midnight Cowboy. I think it won the Oscar, didn't it? Something like that, right. You know, so people are, you know, really weird. And I speak of myself first before I talk about really weird people. But this conference is good. We'll probably get some interviews out of it. And just meeting the people once or twice that you talk to on the phone or on Skype or by email is great. Now, as far as Chris's book, I'll tell you, he's working night and day on this thing. Sometime around 2 o'clock this morning, he sent me a chapter to look over. Because there's a group of people out there, and I'm one of them, who are looking over the book 
checking everything, make sure it's as perfect as possible. And it's very yeah. important. You just can't do this stuff in a vacuum. Chris no. has done all this great research, and now a few of us will look at the book and maybe suggest things to make the language clearer, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because it has to be perfect. You need editors out there to make these books work because you can't do it by yourself. Yeah, that's that was a knock on my last two books that uh, Adventures Unlimited Press doesn't really have the whole editing process uh, down the way it probably should be. David, of course, admits that he's just a guerrilla publisher, and he, he pretty much puts the onus on the writer to deliver the final product. And, and I have been very grateful to have Gene and um, a friend from Florida uh, who was the head of creative writing at Florida State for a number of years uh, is retired now, and she's offered to look at the manuscript. And and I really want this. Uh, this is going to be, I think, an important work. Uh, it, it's it's definitely going to have some shelf life. It's going to be a mainstay, as they say, in, in the business, the publishing uh, world. Uh, I don't see anybody else that is going to be able to uh, cover this subject as thoroughly as I'm I'm attempting to. And I'm I'm really excited about it now that it's almost done. And I'm looking back at everything that I've compiled and all these databases that I've co collated together. Uh, it's it's really jaw dropping, and I'm boy. If you are skeptical of the cattle mutilation uh, mystery, you are going to be hard pressed to argue about some of the cases that are featured in there, some of the lab reports, and the science that's been done. It's really amazing uh, when you look at it in in its totality. It's very very difficult to uh, <laughs> to argue with it. Having seen some of the book, there's an amazing amount of research here. I mean. Yeah. This is a deep book. It's the kind of book that you really have to sit back and read. It's not going to be like a thousand-page book or something. It's going to be of a reasonable length. But you got to look at the research, and there's very little that you won't know about this cattle mutilation mystery or whatever it is after you read this book. It's well, just cattle in class. general. Sure. I mean, just yeah, he gives you the history of cattle, too. You learn about whether beef is the right food to eat. Beef, it's for dinner, or should it be for dinner? Well, After yeah. reading this stuff, you may not want to eat at all. <laughs> That's one of the first questions I always get when people, um, you know, if I give a presentation on this subject, they go, well, do you eat meat? And I, well, yeah, I, I love eating beef. I just you insist on knowing that it's grass-fed, and I know where it's coming from, and that it's not some sort of industrialized, uh, grain-fed feedlot uh, cow that uh, who knows what evil lurks besides antibiotics and the, the growth hormones and I, boy I'm, I, it's all there and uh, I think in order to really study the cattle mutilation phenomena you have to have you have to have a sense and a, an understanding of our deeply incestuous relationship with bovines it, it goes back 30,000 years I think 32,000 years is the earliest depiction that I found of a of a cow, uh, you know, a drawing in a cave painting. And I just move forward in a timeline all the way to the present and into the future. So, you know, without sounding too self-promoting here, um, I, I, do, I do feel a, a real sense of accomplishment and excitement about this project. And I, I have a feeling that the book's going to uh, get, get a little bit of notice. I agree. Is beef what's for dinner or what about chicken? Will they pull the same stunt when they raise chickens too? So it may not be any better. Maybe we should all become vegetarians. But that didn't help Steve Jobs any. He became a vegetarian. No, what happens to you happens to you. Maybe that's not the entire picture. But there you go. But at least here, we have the book that will set aside the mysticism and the fakery and the rumors and tell you what's really going on. And also just telling you about something that happened over 30,000 years ago the people who believe the Earth is 6,000 years old are not going to like that. <laughs> right. Well, I go into the Golden Calf and Hathor and the Apis Bull and the Minoan civilization. And, I mean, just the, the exalted history of man's relationship with, with the sacred cow and the sacred bull, for instance. These animals were revered. And uh, they lived in, in, for instance, the Apis Bull in Egypt lived in its own palace with hundreds of servants. And, and they, they would wait uh, just hang around it, waiting for it to do something that they could interpret, uh, you know, in, in, in a prophecy kind of way, a proph prophetic sort of way. So we've lost this sacred relationship with our with our bovines, and now they're unceremoniously slaughtered 
you know, a single super rendering plant can process up to 400 animals an hour, uh, which is quite, uh, quite frightening when you think about it. <laughs> it becomes an assembly line business. That's unfortunate. It has. It, it already is. And it has been since, uh, you know, I think, up, up, who was it? Upton Sinclair did the big ex- expose in 1902 called The Jungle, which many of us are, are kind of forced to read as kids in school. And and uh, that came on the heels of the Sherman Antitrust Act, which was actually devised in 1896 uh, to break up the beef trust. And uh, and it wasn't until The Jungle was released that... Uh, that the outcry became so loud that uh, certain legal measures were were enacted by by uh, the government to break up the beef trust and you know all this stuff mad cow disease rindapest I mean how many people out there have even heard of rindapest uh, it's a scourge that killed almost all the cattle in Europe in the 1860s all this stuff is connected to the mystery that we now know as the cattle mutilations. And I, I think I make a pretty good case uh, tying all this stuff together. I I've just, you know, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh, my databases for the actual uh, case histories of the phenomena are, have never been brought together uh, in this fashion. And when you see, and when you see uh, how this thing unfolded in the 70s, uh, it's, it's jaw dropping. We're going to drop some more jaws on you. Or something, nothing to do with sharks. But today we're kind of sitting around the old campfire and we're doing that to talk shop. We have your questions left to answer. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. Is there a secret UFO agenda? Do strange creatures from the darkest corners of the mind roam the earth? Is there evidence for mind control, time travel, or devious government conspiracies? Find out the inside scoop on the latest conspiracies, paranormal activity, and Freudian phenomena when you subscribe to Tim Beckley's Conspiracy Journal. It's jam-packed with stories, special book and DVD promotions, and the best news, it's absolutely free, sent right to your mailbox. Plus, a bonus free email newsletter sent out every Friday. Simply send an email with your name and address to MrUFO at WebTV.net. That's MrUFO at WebTV.net. Find out what they don't want you to know. So, you've decided to get prepared. You're not sure that a case of ramen and a couple of granola bars under your bed will cut it as long-term food storage anymore. You're in luck. At Emergency Essentials, we have all the resources to get you started. From three-day emergency bug-out bags to year supplies of food and everything in between. Call Emergency Essentials at 800-999-1863 or visit BePrepared.com. The choice is clear. Be unprepared or BePrepared.com. That's the sound of a 44 Magnum and Trauma Max. A high-tech hybrid Kevlar bulletproof vest from InfidelBodyArmor.com will stop it and most pistol rounds. Trauma Max is a major breakthrough in pistol-rated body armor. And prices start at just $170 per insert. More protection, more stopping power, more mobility. And it weighs less than 5 pounds. Get details at InfidelBodyArmor.com. That's I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. Curious about what comes next? Next is the feeling of vulnerability you get after you arrive home to discover your house has been ransacked by burglars. Fool the bad guys with a new improved fake TV. You asked for it, we listened, and we made our new fake TV three times brighter than our previous model. The brightness of our new fake TV is equivalent to a 40-inch TV. It simulates the color and motion of a real TV while you're away from home. And when burglars think someone is home watching television, they're likely to pass your house and move on to an easier target. The new, brighter Fake TV is only $39.95 and includes free shipping. Go to faketv.com or call 1-877-5-FAKE-TV. That's 877-532-5388 or go to faketv.com. Fake TV. 
the burglar deterrent. A little over a year ago, I began to do a lot of research into why, even though I had a pretty good-sized meal, that I was still starving. And my research led me to a well-known fact that most of the soils that we grow our crops on here in the United States and across the industrialized world are almost completely depleted of almost all of the key minerals and trace elements that our bodies need to rebuild themselves, fight off cancer, and be healthy. I then searched out the best vitamin and mineral company out there and discovered Longevity. The Longevity products are designed to give you the real nutrition you need, and once you've got that, you don't have to eat as much to be satisfied. I've lost 37 pounds in two months, simply getting the vitamins and minerals I need. Check it out for yourself. It's incredible. Go to InfoWarsTeam.com today and order your first canister of Beyond Tangy Tangerine Complete Multivitamin Mineral Complex Dietary Supplement. That's InfoWarsTeam.com. This is Hilly Rose, and I hope that you do listen to the Paracast because you will learn a great deal about the paranormal. On the Paracast with Gene and Chris, we're just reminding you it's not a plug because there's no way Chris is going to become rich from this book. It just doesn't happen with this kind of book. Stalking the Herd from Adventures Unlimited Press. Chris is in the final stages of editing right now. It should be out in a few weeks. As soon as he puts everything together, send it over, though, send it to the printer, and there you go. We're talking shop this week on the Paracast with Gene and Chris. So much to talk about. I've been covering some of the topics that we've got over at the Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com, and we'll get to more of your questions in a moment. I think some people ask like five questions, you know, which we probably can't answer, but we'll try. But there's another issue that some people have raised, and I've been of two minds of this, although I kind of like to see if we can do it. And the question is, what would a Paracast UFO paranormal conference look like? The question being, can we do such a thing? Can we have another one of these UFO conferences? And if we sponsored it, if we brought in the best speakers on the planet on UFOs and paranormal subjects, independent scientists and researchers, could we make it work? And that's the question that we're trying to consider right now, because this is going to be an expensive undertaking. You can't just bring speakers from around the world unless you send them a check and pay their travel expenses and handle the hotel bills. It's going to take a lot of work, and I think we probably have to have an outside committee work with us if we're going to do it, right, Chris? Yeah, Yeah, we definitely would need some help. And And it would have to be really well thought out. The whole conference paradigm, I think, is really changing. And it's becoming harder and harder for uh, people who propose these conferences and and try to start them up. It's very difficult to to get them off the ground. So we're really going to have to do this uh, in a very methodical, well-planned way if we're going to attempt to pull it off. I think it's possible. I think there's room for a more open... Uh, less rigid uh, conference uh, like the the Paracast would put on. And, you know, I think we need to really, really look at it and, and get a team together uh, to, you know, explore the possibilities and, and obviously to do it to do it correctly so it's a success. Now, I should tell you, we have Jeff Crowell, who's been on the show. He's a longtime member of our forums and a listener. He's one of our forum moderators. And he's been working with us to put together the rudimentary parts of a proposal get a lot of input. But I'm going to ask you listeners, if you'd like to see a sponsor a conference, and something like this would have to be considered on an annual basis, okay, probably in the Phoenix area because that's close to us. If we're going to do this thing, we need input from everyone, pluses and minuses and ideas, how to raise funding like a Kickstarter campaign, for example, to cover our costs, whatever it would be. Contact us. You could send us a tweet on Twitter, the Paracast. It's the Paracast on Twitter. There's also a Paracast fan club on Facebook. Or just drop into our forums or write news at theparacast.com. The question is, would you like to see the ultimate UFO paranormal conference or whatever it's going to be sponsored by the Paracast If you'd like to make suggestions, maybe you're in the conference business, 
and you have some input you can offer us, maybe some advice on how to raise capital for it, some advice also on just running it. Because I think a lot of the problems that you have in existing conferences is the people who run it may be eager and enthusiastic and they care about what they're doing, but do they know how to run a conference? I can't say I do. I think Chris and I would be enthusiastic about it, but we want to bring in some experts. We don't claim to know everything. I actually put on a conference once, Gene. You did. I did also. I'll tell you about that in a moment, but let's hear yours. Yeah, uh, back in, in the uh, mid-90s, when um, so many people were interested in the work that I was doing, this is uh, right when the Internet was starting, was really starting to, to gain some momentum. Uh, I was asked if I would, would actually put together um, a group of speakers and, and feature them uh, in Colorado in the San Luis Valley. And I did, and it was well attended. Uh, most of the people that came, of course, were, were locals. There had been a lot of media and press about uh, the sighting waves that were occurring, some of the, the strange events that were being covered in the media. So there was a bit of a buzz locally. And um, we actually did it in two places. We did it one day down in Alamosa, and the next day we did it up in Salida. And we had a good turnout. I mean, I was able to cover all my expenses, at least. Uh, I didn't lose any money. I didn't make any money. But but uh, a lot of people uh, went away, obviously, uh, with a bit of an education about some of these events and, and, and phenomena. And, and also, it gave me a chance to really uh, network with locals and uh, increase my, my, uh, my sources and my, my network of, of sky watchers and, and people reporting in uh, strange events. So... So it was, uh, I think, moderately successful, and I breathed a big sigh of relief when I when I realized that hey, I was going to generate just enough money to to go ahead and, and pay the bills. You know, I flew in a couple of folks and and put them up at hotels and had to pay for the, the two spaces, of course. And uh, at least I was able to do that, and and I I think a lot of people locally got a lot out of it. So I'm really hoping that this idea of a Paracast conference is uh, going to get legs and. And we could use a team of people helping out and coming up with ideas and brainstorming with us. We did the same thing back in the 1970s. They had something called the National UFO Conference. Of course, the permanent chairman was the one, the only Jim Mosley, who's no longer with us. But I got the bid in 1975, I believe. And we ran the conference. It was in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. We had maybe a couple of hundred people there, which I think was fairly good at the time. Didn't have a large budget, but we ended up losing $135, which wasn't so bad, you know. Not bad. No, of course, that's like $300 in today's dollars, but at least it was decent. People had a lot of fun. We enjoyed it, and I did vow never to do it again. This is the 1970s, so we're talking about a lot of years ago. I said, I'll never do this again unless... You know, I have some business help for it. But now we're back into it again. So it was never say never. We'll have to see how it works out and whether we'll do this kind of thing. I sort of think that it may happen. That'd be great. I mean, I, I'd, I'd really, boy, I'd enjoy putting together a, you know, a speaker's list of really, really cool folks that, uh, you know, that aren't into this uh, to create cults of personality or to promote some foregone conclusion or bang, some agenda drum or, you know, there's so much of that in the field now. And there's so many people that are, you know, have to come up with new and different headlines every six months to uh, stay in the public eye. I think there's a lot of hardworking people that that are in the back, uh, just in the trenches doing the work and not lusting after recognition. Stan Gordon is is one of my all-time heroes. This guy for 50 plus years 60 years has been, you know, just very methodically running around Pennsylvania and and just investigating some of the most mind warping cases over the years, uh, starting with Kecksburg, of course, uh, was his first real big case. And people like that, I think, deserve uh, more attention. Um, we also need to get, uh, I think, more attention on, on people that are really looking at this uh, in a new and creative way, out of the box thinkers. And um, I think there's there's a way to do this and present this type of information in a way that will be attractive to people if it's marketed properly, obviously. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to you know kicking around some ideas and developing this whole thing. I will promise you two guests will not be there. We will not invite Stephen Greer. We will not invite Linda Motenhow. I promise Aww. you they are not invited. I'll say that right now. Oh, can't come. I just talked to Linda a couple days ago. I'm trying to get her to do an interview for the book, but it's 
It's not going well. We're just ships in the night. Well, I wouldn't mind having her on the show, but she'd have to answer some tough questions. I don't oh boy. know if she does that. I mean, she'll go on coast to coast because it's softball questions, softball interviews. She, she can just repeat her talking points. And when George Norrie is awake, he might even respond. No. You know, someone wrote us not so long ago saying, why are we making personal attacks against Coast to Coast AM? Well, we talk about the show in the sense of what it lacks, which is journalistic cred, asking tough questions, having a lazy host. But that's not a personal attack. No, it's just, you know, it's just an opinion. I think George Norrie is a nice guy. That's what they tell me. I like George. He's a sweetheart. He's got a good singing voice, too. He has a good singing voice? Yeah, he's he's very uh, talented. He he was at uh, some conference recently where he actually got up there and started singing, uh, you know, old standard songs. I think his parents were there or something, and and uh, you know, they, they must got be two thousand years and... old now. His parents. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. so he's a, he's a good singer. I'm sure he's a nice guy. You want to have a beer with him, sit down and talk. But we criticize the show because the show is lazy, but the show also exploits people that do not deserve that attention because they're not helping anything. They're just entertainers. No. With Gene and Chris, we're talking shop. You're in the Paracast. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. We the People grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800 686 2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800 686 2237. That's 800 686 2237. Nutritious food is real body armor. It builds muscle, burns fat, improves digestion, and feeds the entire body the nutrients it needs. Did you know the U.S. government banned the hemp plant from growing in the United States and classified it as a Schedule One drug to hide it behind the marijuana plant? People have been confused about this plant for over 80 years, and many still don't know what hemp is. So now you know hemp is not marijuana, and marijuana is not hemp. They are different varieties of the same species. Hemp USA.org wants the world to know these basic facts and to help people understand that hemp protein powder is the best kept health secret you need to know about. Remember, hemp protein powder contains 53% protein, is gluten-free, anti-inflammatory, non-GMO, and is loaded with nutrients. Call 888-910-4367, 888-910-4367, and see what our powder, seeds, and oil can do for you only at HempUSA.org. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Shop Talk on the Paracast. We do this every so often where we kind of sit back with all the guests we've had and take stock, see what's going on, see where we should go from here. So we talk briefly about Roswell, once again, we talked briefly about the possibility of a Paracast UFO paranormal conference. If it happens, if we can put it together, maybe we could do it next spring. I don't know. We may not have enough time, but that's always a possibility. Certainly, if it's going to be in Arizona, we don't want to be there in the height of the summer when it's 115 degrees in the shade. So it would have to be no later than late spring or early fall. That's another possibility. Yeah. 
So we'll see what happens and see if we get enough offers of help from our listeners in the sense of volunteering, sitting down, helping us put together a plan, a battle plan, and we'll see what happens. And we'll see whether it's something that we can do or not. And there you go. We had a bunch of interesting questions asked yeah, us. Yeah, we do. And this is, of course, because we announced the last minute that we're going to do one of these Shop Talk episodes. We tend to kind of schedule them at the last minute, just trying to make sure that we break up just one guest after another with some commentary. So we were asked, I don't know, 15, 20 different questions from listeners right. and comments. We've answered one already, but we've got, Chris, you can go through this, six questions from Jeff Crowell. Yeah, who's our newest moderator at forum.theparacast.com and is also actively helping us develop this idea of a conference. And and as usual, Jeff is asking some pretty cool questions. The first one is, with the attention deficit disorder of today's youth, what would your strategy be for drawing more interest into the field of UFO research for teenagers and young adults? Oh, boy, that's a hard question. You know, I kind of, I've got a, I've got a pretty, sp- well, pretty good sure. answer. All right, well, let's have your answer, and then I'll throw you some comments. What okay. do you think is the magic bullet there? Well, I think uh, promoting a an app, a smartphone app that allows you to become instru- uh, an instrumented uh, researcher is one way to do it and have some sort of training seminar and some marketing to really push the idea of, of becoming a potential investigator uh, armed with the type of equipment that would allow you to uh, – you know, become instrumented. Uh, you could have a, a variety of, and, and there are, I think, some ghost hunting uh, apps for this. But uh, someone that, to develop something that that uses the technology that that kids and, and younger people are more familiar with and comfortable with. If you could somehow incorporate that uh, that built-in interest uh, into some sort of application, uh, I, I think that that would really go a long way. That's one one possible answer. You know, there are UFO applications available from the App Store and also the Google Play Store. There are applications there that supposedly allow you to either play a game or otherwise get involved in UFO research. I can't say whether this is the sort of thing that will help you. There's, for example, something called UFO Sightings I'm looking at right now. Maybe I'll install it as we go along to see what it's about. And this is where you're able to explore... In fact, you hear me typing on it right now, you see? I'm typing on it right now. We're going to download this thing, and let's just see if this is anything that would be worth it. There are applications already. I know there was one that keeps up to date, kind of like a database of sightings that was available on Google Play on the Android platform. So it's downloading now. We'll see. It's a free app. It's from a company called Object Graph, and I'm going to open it. That was pretty fast, wasn't it? Wow. And it looks like it's analy- It's designed to analyze existing photos, I guess. It says a select existing picture. And I guess it's what it's going to do is look at your own photos. And the only photo stream I have shows my dog, so I don't think my dog <laughs> makes a good UFO photo. So that app, by the way, is useless. So there you go. And then there's another one called 3D UFO Light, which I think is a game. So there are UFO things here. The question is, according to Apple, there's 1,163 apps that have UFO in the title and somehow relate to UFOs. Wow. You hear that? So you were saying, let's have an app. Is there an app for that? Most of it, though, is games. Yeah. And the question would be then, how do we put together something that actually helps people keep track of the real mystery? And certainly something like this would appeal to the young people. There's also something called UFO Magazine. I hope it's not that UFO Magazine. (laughs) So we'll have to see. It's it's going to scan my fingerprint right now to download. It's an interesting thing. This is the one with the fingerprint scanner. So before it downloads the free app, it does my fingerprint. So I take my fingerprint and stick it on the home button and it reads it. It knows everything about me. But it doesn't go to ET, by the way. Didn't we just tell you before we get too paranoid about this? The fingerprint sensor, Touch ID it's called for the iPhone 5S, it stores your fingerprint in the processor chip on the phone itself. It's not going to Apple. It's not going to the NSA, I don't think. That you know of. That I know about, okay? So I'm going to open it now. 
And let's see if that UFO magazine or what? I don't know. It says every issue. This is maybe the British UFO magazine? Ah, uh, Graham Birdsell. Yeah, let's see. Let's download one and see. Okay, I'm downloading right now for January 2013. Yeah, this is not the one that Bill Burns is involved in. This is the British one. The point being here is if someone's interested in UFOs and they're young and they've got their iPhone and the iPhones and iPads are very, very popular among young people, more so than Android phones, by the way. That's something which I don't think is generally realized. But we already have this material here, but are the young people looking at that material and deciding what to do with it? Would we be better off doing more on Facebook and Twitter, for example? Yeah. Yeah, well, obviously, that would, that would be, you know, the next logical, uh, you know, possibility to get more young people interested in the subject. I, I think the best thing to, you know, to interest people is, is a sighting wave that uh, is covered by, by, you know, local, regional and national and even international press. Uh, as long as we can keep the little green men jokes and whistling the Twilight theme out of the coverage... I think if it's covered in a straightforward sort of newsworthy way, that that, that alone will increase uh, visibility, increase interest, and and I think uh, pique the curiosity of, of younger folks. Okay, that works for me. We'll have Here's to another question, Gene. This is one sure. for you. For me? Nobody asked me any questions. Oh, yeah. No, in no, your opinion, I'm not going to answer What is the anything. most compelling paranormal case, UFO or otherwise, within the last 10 years, and why do you think that case has not been given as much attention as it would have in the past? 10 years? You mean like Stephenville, Texas? Stephenville, oh, the O'Hare Airport. Right. Case. There's, there's been a bunch of them. Oh, yeah. I don't think they get the play of the older cases, but it doesn't mean they're less compelling. I agree. So I think we're in agreement. Let's keep it at those two for now. Okay. Because Stephenville wasn't just one case. It was a number of cases. Yeah, it was a series of, of sighting events, correct. And How about our Paracast VIP or Paracast Plus or that type of idea? We were kicking around uh, a bit uh, on the forum about oh. coming up with some sort of uh, bonus uh, version of the Paracast that, that would be a subscription type thing that would would give you added features that we don't normally provide now. Where, where are we standing on that, Gene? Okay, well, I was looking for ideas. I posted something in our forums at forum.theparacast.com as to what a Paracast Pro or Plus should be like. What kind of features can we offer? Now, some people are saying, hey, what about an ad-free version of the show? But the network won't let us do that, so we can't. Now, maybe they'll change their minds, but right now GCN says that if you distribute the show, it has to be with all the ads intact. So that's where it is. That's what the network says. So that's the one thing we can't do. But let's look at the stuff that we can do. Number one, maybe offering a custom channel on YouTube. Can we do a private channel at YouTube where only members yeah. are allowed? Okay, that okay. might be a possibility and more possibilities coming Paracast Pro with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It just stopped responding. It took hours before it returned, but I had already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Check it out. iWeb.com. That's iWeb.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Hi, this is Gary Cooper with Midas Resources Gold and Silver. 
government shutdown, inept politicians, entitlements, looming Obamacare. The death of the U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency is what nobody wants to acknowledge. We have a debt bubble that cannot be paid and will eventually crash the dollar. If you're concerned about keeping your money, why not consider storing your wealth in gold and silver? Call me, Gary Cooper, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 130. Together we'll discuss your options of buying gold and silver. Again, the global elite have plans for your money and it doesn't include you. So call me, Gary Cooper, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 130, and we'll discuss your options of buying precious metals. Also, I can send you information on how you can roll over your IRA or 401k into a precious metal IRA. Again, don't get caught with money in your account when the dollar crashes. Call me, Gary Cooper, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 130. Hi, this is Steve Sanchez, and based on a recent study, it was found that 57 million Americans had legal issues over the last 12 months, but only 60% of those studied sought out the services of a lawyer. Why? In a nutshell, affordability. While well, my friends at Legal Shield have created a solution that can help you not if, but when you need an attorney. For as little as $17 per month, Legal Shield will provide you unlimited access to qualified attorneys at an accomplished law firm for advice and counsel on legal issues no matter matter how serious or trivial. For over 40 years and with 1.4 million families across North America, Legal Shield can help you, the loyal GCN listener. Representatives are standing by now to answer your questions, so call them now at 1-855-340-SAVE. That's 1-855-340-7283 or visit them at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Heart and Body Extract continues to receive positive testimonials from people who have experienced amazing results, like Reed. I just wanted to send you a quick but a very big thank you for Heart and Body Extract. I've been on the formula for nearly a month now, and the improvement in the circulation of my legs has been simply amazing. Reed was facing a tough choice. I was facing surgery due to the severity of the 100% blocked arteries in both my legs. And my decision waiting for surgery to say no and try heart and body extract instead has been thankfully the right decision. And the result? I can now walk up steps without noticeable pain. Order heart and body extract at 866-295-5305. 866-295-5305 or hbextract.com. Heart and body extract for a long and healthy life. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. On the Paracast, we're exploring whether we can have a VIP Pro Plus version of the show or the features that we offer. So as Chris says, maybe we can do a custom YouTube channel with special interviews, both audio and video. I don't do the video. I'll be behind the camera. And Chris, of course, he has this image with the hat and the braids and the hair or whatever, so he can get up there and be a public personality. I'll be behind the scenes. I'll be the invisible voice. Okay? All right. That's a good idea. You know, put together special productions, video, audio productions that regular listeners cannot get unless they subscribe. That's one thing. Another thing would be, of course, special chat rooms where we all get together and talk about the show or things like that, an interactive mm-hmm. chat a good room. Idea. Okay, special forums. Now, we do have a mechanism to do that. The forum software we use is called Zenforo. That's X-E-N-F-O-R-O dot com if you want to check it out. And they've got something called a resource manager where you can set up a custom subscription or pay service. We have that installed already, although people who visit our forums don't know it. But we need not just being able to produce the content, but we need a web developer to help us integrate something like that. So if one of our listeners who has web experience, if you want to volunteer, you'll get a free membership with it, okay? Maybe I'll get you a T-shirt or something or a cup or a hat. But we'll work out some deal with you. 
and you help us develop the back-end infrastructure so we can build this Paracast Pro. And once we set it up, probably as a subscription basis monthly or annually, we'll set the rates, something not too expensive, because I know that people don't have a lot of disposable income like they did before in these days, so we don't want to make it too expensive, a few dollars a month, less than $50 a year, something like that. And we'll work into delivering all this interesting extra content. Maybe have a special discussion every week after a show to flesh things out. And sometimes guests will join us. Special guests who won't be on the PowerCast directly, but would be willing to join us in this special proposal. Chris, you have some ideas? Well, I think all those are are real good ideas. And and I think we should open this up again to our our listening audience and and for the people that uh participate at our forums and and let's um let's start to narrow it down gene i think all these are good ideas um the idea possibly of a of a news roundup every week you know a quick 15 minute roundup of some of the news uh, in the world of uh the paranormal U- ufos and and the like um i write a column monthly or about every two months called uh, the crypto corner update for the world explorers magazine so I'm constantly combing through and and saving uh, links to uh, articles and and stuff. And I, I do, you know, I do. I'm pretty diligent about it. And I I, I think I'd be able to pull that off and uh, do a, a little webcast every week. That would be another idea, kind of an update. Uh, there's lots of ideas. I think uh, I think special interviews. Uh, you know, having uh, possibly some field interviews going out. Uh, posting some in, investigative footage from maybe a network of investigators uh, that we we can get a relationship established with and have them provide us with some uh, with some field out in the field sort of uh, webcast type things or or something on you know that's saved and then uh, rebroadcast later. So these are all good ideas. Let's hear your ideas, folks, and uh, shoot them off to us at forum.theparacast.com. Info at theparacast.com is a good way to email us. And uh, how about another question there, Gene? Here's one for you. For me, let me just tell you one more thing before we go to the next question. Again, we do need help with the web design back end to integrate what they call the resource manager of our forum software to set this up so that when we have it open, it's easy for people to subscribe. It's not going to be like the healthcare exchange. <laughs> where it doesn't work. It has to be something that's simple. You sign up as a member of the forum, and with a few clicks, you could subscribe, and there you go. Let's go for that other question. Who are your top five UFO researchers active in the field today, and why are they on your top five list? Chris, I'll have yours first. Well, that's a tough one. There are uh, quite a number of folks out there that uh, that should be on a list. I I would be hard-pressed to to boil it down to to five. And, uh, you know, again, I, I mentioned Stan Gordon. He's always been a real hero of mine. I really think he does uh, exceptional work. My mentor and, and dear friend, David Perkins, who I'm still trying to get him to come on the show, he's all will always be in my top five list. I think uh, Nick uh, is, is just a prolific, uh, smart, good writer, excellent researcher. I think he should be up there. I think the work that John Greenwald has done at the Black Vault is extremely important and and just an an, an incredible resource. But we have um, to ignore his politics. His politics are a little wacky. Let's go beyond. Well, that. yeah, we're talking UFO researchers here, and and having you know half a million pages of government documents is is that's. I mean, he got started when he was I think fifteen or something, fourteen in this field. And now he's a grizzled veteran. <laughs> Micah Hanks, I, I really admire his forward uh, creative thinking. You know, he's an extremely brilliant, uh, smart, and uh, just always is thinking outside of the box. I really admire that. You know, I could go down the line. Uh, there, you know, there's there's quite a number of folks out there that uh, deserve mention. I think Jeff Willis down in, in Phoenix, uh, as a videographer, he's caught some amazing stuff down there that that he really hasn't tried to create some sort of cult of personality around himself and is just quietly doing the work and has quite a network of folks that are that are alerting him when things are going on in the skies over uh, your neck of the woods there, Gene. So I don't know if that's five, but uh, there's just off the top of my head some folks that I, I admire um, and I, I really look forward to 
to what they have to say and uh, the types of work that they're doing. I'm, I'm always interested in what they're up to. And of course, we can't forget people like Jerome Clark, a veteran researcher and historian who has kept tabs on the real things in the UFO field. I think Richard Dolan is doing some interesting work in exploring the national security aspects of the UFO enigma, and we really can't ignore him. We have to look at Leslie Kane because she's done things to bring UFOs out of the closet and make it acceptable for the public at large. And some people say, well, maybe she should commit herself to more specific belief systems in UFOs. But what she's doing is getting military people, scientists, people who would not embrace UFO research involved. And that's not an easy thing to do. No. And the way she's going about it, I think, is commendable. She's had one of the very, very few best-selling books about UFOs. And that counts for an awful lot because not all best-selling books are good books. And she's one of the few who has had a book out that is really compelling. And it paints a compelling case also of something strange going on that we need to understand. And she wants to attract mainstream science. Right. And she's working really hard. And I think she has that. I know years ago when we did the National UFO Conference, we'd give an award of the UFO Investigator of the Year. So if we're making a list, that would be something to consider for our Paracast UFO Paranormal Conference. Yep. So much more to talk about with Gene and Chris. Talking shop, you're in the Paracast. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com To thank you for being a loyal listener, we have a limited time freebie offer for you. Claim your free heirloom tomato seeds, just pay shipping, right now at 123freeseeds.com. These aren't ordinary seeds. These are heirloom, non-genetically modified super seeds that are open pollinated and can be grown, harvested, and replanted endlessly. These survival seeds are actually more valuable than gold in a crisis. Go to 123freeseeds.com and you can get an airtight storage packet of 150 super seeds free while supplies last to say thank you for being a loyal listener. First come, first served. Just cover shipping. Go to 123freeseeds.com now to see if your free heirloom seeds are still available. That's 123freeseeds.com. And the winner of fallback pricing is... You. The results are in from Freeze Dry Guy's You Be the Boss, Tell Us What You Want Us to Put on Sale campaign. After getting phone calls, emails, blog, and Facebook comments, nominating your favorite freeze-dried foods and dehydrated foods, you the people, you the bosses have spoken. We the staff at Freeze Dry Guy have listened, as we've done since 1970. So now, one item and one entire line of food are on special sale until the end of October. The entire line of popular non-GMO and gluten-free foods are 20% off. The Family First Responders Kit, loaded with delicious freeze-dried foods like hearty beef stew, lasagna, and mouth-watering strawberries, is roughly 30% off. Go to freezedryguy.com. That's freezedryguy.com to order or call 866-404-3663. 866-404-FOOD and make your own deal. Thank you, boss. 
You are now in the crosshairs. The NSA and the FBI are treating you like a criminal and monitoring your every move. Ron Paul said recently, The evidence of the totalitarian nature of this government is on display undeniably every day. What's taking place right now is a coup and the destruction of the Constitution. Fortunately, there is something you can do about it. Learn how to be invisible, lock down your privacy, and even disappear forever. Go to privacylockdown.com to learn how. That's privacylockdown.com. Are you someone who forges your own trail? Are you a pioneer with the need to homestead your self-reliant entrepreneur spirit? If so, RF Bunker has a franchise opportunity for you. RF Bunker is the fastest growing emergency and survival retail store in the United States. RF Bunker franchise opportunities are leading the way for business-minded heroes seeking adventure in owning and operating their own emergency supply and survival store. Visit rfbunker.com or call 866-623-2932. This offer is not being directed to any resident of the register-required states. Hi, this is Don Ecker, and you are tuned into the Paracast. Let me tell you what, you're going to hear stuff here that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Hear that, George Snorri? Answering your questions as we do some shop talk on the Paracast with Gene and Chris. You asked us about our favorite UFO investigators, and Chris and I popped a list of some people doing really good work. I think there are a lot of people around the world doing things that are really solid. A.J. Gerverd in Brazil yep. is at the forefront of UFO investigation in South America. Mm-hmm. Every time we have him on the show, it's really enjoyable. He has so much information to offer. Yeah, and Antonio Huneas is another one that's just an unsung hero that's a walking encyclopedia on this subject and is constantly coming up with interesting uh, information revisiting and reanalyzing cases that didn't get the kind of uh, notoriety that they possibly deserve, for instance. Uh, there's there's quite a number of folks. You mentioned uh, Richard Dolan, of course. Rosemary Guiley. I, I went on an investigation trip with her up to the San Luis Valley, and I was really impressed with this woman's ability to work with, with experiencers, how she handled herself uh, on the two investigations that we co uh, worked on. I was very impressed. I learned some some pretty valuable things uh, from her investigative techniques. You know, we have a, obviously we have a, a number of people. Uh, we're going to have Brad Steiger on. Of course, Brad is is a, a pillar in this in this whole paranormal field and, and realm. And you know, I I think for all his um, I don't know just controversy or surrounding uh, some of his work. Anthony Bergaglia is an, an amazing digger uh, in terms of coming up with uh, with you know interesting uh, papers, files, correspondences, these sorts of things. Uh, you 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 have to you know give him a nod because he is a very good digger and he can come up with some. Some very controversial and, and amazing stuff, obviously. Um, well, with Sakara, New Mexico, of course, we kind of think that maybe some of the evidence he brought forth may be a bit wacky. But yeah. the fact that he brought it up and makes something that we have to discuss more important. Right. At the end of the day, saying it's a hoax may not prove it is, and right now it doesn't seem to be. But we have to ask those questions. We need people who go in there. If you want to say someone's doing some really good work, on the skeptical side, Lance Moody has done some really good work. Lance don't is another agree one. With him. I think bigger. Lance is someone who comes across, you know, a little bit sarcastic and such in the forums. But when you talk to him, he's a really nice guy. And he's really sincere about what he does. And he was the one who broke open the evidence about Philip Imbrogno and about the fact that his background was a fake. You know, and of course, we have, did we mention Don Ecker? Yeah, Don, again, has been a real trooper for f- going on 30, 40 years now. Um, of course, the, the, the top of my list would have to be Ray Stanford and his, uh, his hard, hard data scientific uh, a- analytical work that he's doing. When he comes out with this stuff, everything is going to change. And I, I don't want to get embroiled in another uh, controversy about my impressions and feelings about Ray. But I, I think that it, right now he is doing the most important work in the field. And when he does finally come out with this work, I will have the last laugh. Let's put it that way. You've seen some of it. We know that James Fox, the UFO documentary producer, has seen a lot of it. So it is there. It's real. This is not a fake thing. No, no, this is the real deal. And 
some scientists who have recently gone and seen his work are are just totally amazed. They they one scientist even used the Nobel word around him and 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 said if this is really presented properly to the scientific community, it's going to burst the whole UFO field wide open in, in terms of our our actual ability to ascertain technology and 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 scientific principles that are operative uh, with these objects and and. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to set myself up for more grief on the uh, on the forums. I, I I'm just as as excited and 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 just frustrated about his work coming out finally, as as probably more so than everybody else. And it's just nobody is doing anything that even is in the same ballpark as Ray. And I, I'll just I'll just keep saying it. Keep saying it, and people will eventually accept it. They'll have to. Well, he's got to come out with it. He can't be sitting on on this information uh, much longer. He's going to present it uh, to the scientific community, and uh, and then all bets are off after that. It's really going to blow this field wide open. Well, uh, Gene, here's another question. We're we're running down Jeff Krause's list here. What are the top three issues or problems with current UFO research or paranormal research, for that matter? And what do you think is the best solution to address these problems or solutions? You mean other than telling people to put their egos in the closet and shut the door with a deadbolt lock that helps yeah. yeah that's 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 probably a good place to start but also never cease to be open minded i i think once people are in, involved in in researching and investigating these subjects at a certain point they start to make up their minds and then they get the blinders on and they run around looking for data to support their foregone conclusions i i think that this does the field a disservice I think we should always be open-minded. We should always be willing to be presented data that will change our minds, that will influence our thinking. This is something we find on the forums all the time, people having these endless arguments, knowing that the other person is never going to entertain their particular point of view for whatever reason. And I I think it's really uh, important to always keep an open mind to somehow weed out these these Johnny-come-lately you know, the twins, the brothers that should not be mentioned and, and some of these people that are showing up and with all these wild, you know, outrageous claims and, and uh, you know, they're, maybe they have a little bit of uh, PR savvy and they're able to get, uh, you know, some notoriety. I think that uh, when it comes to the kids and trying to get young people interested, if they have to wade through too much of this stuff and they don't have the skill set to do so, this is going to make it very difficult for them to really – differentiate between the wheat and the chafe and the signal and the noise. So those are my comments on that. How about you, Gene? Obviously, the egos, obviously people who are wedded to a particular belief. I think a few of the prominent researchers, we don't have to name them, but we might as well. I think Stanton Friedman has done some really good work, but he's also wedded to certain points, certain talking points that he's been repeating for many, many years. And as much as you show him that those talking points may not be valid, such as the MJ-12 documents, he'll double down and say they are. And I think that hurts things. I think it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, you have to be willing to accept the fact that anything you say about the subject may be wrong. And that's really hard if you've spent 40 years lecturing on something and using it as your linchpin. So that's another problem. Again, it goes back to not just putting your ego in the closet, but also being a little more amenable to different possibilities. I mean, one of the things that John Keel did that was really great is he made you think about aspects of UFO and paranormal research you didn't think about before. Because I think a lot of people who are very prominent in this field are lazy thinkers. You know, I think of the late Major Donald Kehoe, the forerunner of this, who decided in maybe 1950, UFOs are spaceships, the government knows this, they're keeping it a secret, and for the rest of his days, I don't think he changed a thing about what he believed. I interviewed him in the latter days of his life, and I got the same story. So I kind of assume he never changed his belief, but that's part of it also. People develop some kind of theory early on, and maybe they get the lecture tours or the books out of it, And nothing will let them change. I think Dr. J. Allen Hynek was a person who was changing his views in his final years. Because, not just because of what 
he reportedly told Donald Schmidt, as what Schmidt related when we talked to him a couple of weeks back on the Paracast, it is what he told me. I got the same impression that he was looking at the so-called three and a half D UFO or whatever, as Jim Mosley called it, something more involved than just spaceships. I mean, spaceships is enough. Yeah. It is fantastic enough, but he had come to think that the UFO field encompassed a lot more. And I think part of the problem also is having tunnel vision, not being able to accept the possibility that what you believe may have no basis in reality, and they may have to embrace some more interesting ideas. We have to embrace this. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It just stopped responding. It took hours before it returned, but I had already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Check it out. iWeb.com. That's iWeb.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these specials. A 14 by 21 foot shop for under 6000 or a 50 by 100 for under 30000 You heard right. That's 5000 square feet under $30,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. An e-cig revolution is sweeping across the country. But is yours American-made? Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig is. Manufactured in Arkansas with 100% USA-sourced ingredients. And when you buy American, you support local jobs. Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig is top quality at an affordable price. The very principle that once drove the American economy. Get great taste with no ash, tar, or smoke. You'll be wondering why you didn't make the change to Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig a long time ago. LaSig.com has everything you need for beginners to the advanced vaping enthusiast with a wide variety of hardware and also imported e-liquid flavors as well. Plus, LaSig smokes the competition with fast, free, same-day shipping, real people customer service, and a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Support our country and become a vapriate at LaSig.com or call 870-525-1440, 870-525-1440. LaSig e-cigarettes for today's modern smoker. Many Americans suffer from poor digestion, which can adversely affect their health. For you guys who have digestive issues, glutathione is amazingly important for inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, stomach cancer. The glands of the stomach produce lots of glutathione. So glutathione's got multiple roles to play, and one of the best ways to upregulate to make more glutathione is to take the building blocks, glycine being one of the most important of the building blocks for making glutathione. Your ultimate enzymes contain something called 
trimethylglycine. We know it as betaine. We talk about betaine as an important ingredient for acidification, for keeping the pH of the stomach nice and low. But betaine can also help you make glutathione. Help your body build glutathione. Order Ultimate Enzymes by calling 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 or on the web at brightsideben.com. That's brightsideben.com. Order today. Hi, this is nuclear physicist lecturer Stanton Friedman. You are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. With Gene and Chris in the Paracast, we talk shop. And I was talking about the things that UFO researchers are doing that maybe hurt the field. Chris, you were about to say something about that. Yeah, when I first got involved uh, as a, you know, a dedicated uh, field investigator and someone that actually was actively running around uh, covering uh, claims and, and case reports and that sort of uh, thing, David Perkins very early on told me that, uh, I think I can quote him word for word, he says, everything that you think about this is wrong, but boy, I sure like your enthusiasm. <laughs> so... You always have to, you know, you always have to be light on your feet in terms of your thinking. And I think your point about lazy thinkers is really important. Um, You know, the further the decades go descend behind you in this field, the more entrenched your your thinking, I think, naturally becomes. And and it's really tough to to keep a fresh perspective. Here's uh, the last of Jeff's questions. This is a good one. If money were no option. Or I, I think he, if money was not an issue, I think is what he's saying. What would you do to propel the UFO research field forward? For instance, would you establish a research organization like MUFON? You want me to take that first? Oh, please. Well, first thing I'd do is uh, I'd get a worldwide hotspot network of instrumented 24-7 uh, video and, and instrumented coverage of hotspot areas and have it all integrated uh, through uh, the internet and maybe not have an official organization, but have a network of dedicated professionals manning this gear and then dedicated professionals who would be managing the database that would be accumulated uh, through this effort. Uh, that would be my, that's that's number one on my wish list uh, in terms of that particular question. And and we are seeing some headway, by the way, with the San Luis Valley camera project. We've had some real major issues with bandwidth. Uh, we think we've uh, come up with a workaround for this. We're going to relay a, a very, you know, a substantial uh, pipeline to a new tower that's going to be put up near the Great Sand Dunes Oasis. And uh, this will allow us to then have the adequate bandwidth to be able to pull this multi-camera system off right now. So the, I'll have some more news on this here in the next week or two. We also have to work a way of streaming that on your site. And one of the techniques we explored doesn't look viable anymore because it relies on outmoded technology. Right. So let me just raise the issue again. If we're going to do this, we need something that will work on a Mac, a PC, a smartphone, iPhone, Android, Galaxy S4, whatever. We need HTML5 streaming. If anyone knows who that is, get in touch with us. No. At news at com, And we'll hook you up with Chris and get this thing to work. Has to yeah. be HTML5 because we need something that's compatible with a billion devices that are out there right now. A billion devices. Who yeah, you know the technology is there. It's there. Sure. So there you More go questions? There. Me? Questions? I've got answers. <laughs> no, go ahead. Okay. Here's a good one from Stagger Lee, who's uh, been a poster now for almost a year. Uh, Stagger Lee doctor. was the name of a record, a rock and roll record from the 1950s by the late Lloyd Price. Yep. Stagger Lee. Yes. Since joining the forum, I have come to believe, as others here do, that the UFO phenomenon seems to correct itself, thus making it very difficult or next to impossible to obtain evidence through picture, video, etc. My thinking is that the intelligence behind these craft is somehow able to manipulate time in a manner that leaves a witness or witnesses unable to gather evidence. What are your thoughts on this theory? Am I misunderstanding the points of this theory? 
Well, this is something about what we talked about earlier in the episode, yep. about the trickster aspect to it. Like, in response to the question, well, all these people have the smartphones and they've got the tablets. Why aren't they taking really good pictures of UFOs? And we look at the fact that, obviously, it's unexpected, so we don't remember to take the thing out of our pocket. But also, maybe we are being manipulated. But I think the UFO field has been a lot about manipulation, about reflecting the state of the culture. And as our culture expands, what we perceive to be UFOs expands or changes. So we are being manipulated. We are under control of something. No. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I also would like to add that uh, based on the work that Ray Stanford is doing, uh, he's come to the conclusion that we're, we're dealing with some time-based element, some time compression, that these objects are actually operating far faster and far more um, efficiently in, in a sort of a compressed time uh, frame, if you will. And that suggests to me that there is an overlooked aspect to um, – you know, your average sighting. And that is the, the aspect of, of consciousness. I think, I think consciousness is somehow involved in, in this. And you, you, for some reason, certain people seem to be more open to having the experience. And that tends to almost be like a, an attractor. Uh, generally, closed-minded people, uh, hard-boiled skeptics are the last people to have, uh, a, you know, a, a highly unusual experience that they can't explain. Although it does happen from time to time, I think if you're open to the ex to having the experience, uh, you're attracting and increasing your odds of having that experience. And I, I think that's an overlooked element that really hasn't had enough, or I think, research done. Um, other, you know, things I it's. It's really difficult, like I said, and we covered this earlier, it's really difficult for the average person to be faced with the inexplicable and, and react like a professional. Grab the camera, uh, start looking for other witnesses uh, to corroborate your sighting, grab your notepad and paper, get people's names and addresses, get supportive information. People have a tendency to be dazzled and and. And, uh, and they, you know, they freeze, uh, essentially. And I, I think people need to be more open and more ready for these things to happen. So it's not quite as a surprise when it does happen. Of course, if you haven't had it happen before, how can that happen? Speaking of happening. Well, it's that whole idea of being able to manipulate time. I think that that's a key thing. That and the component of consciousness. I think that's those are the two uh, crucial elements, I think, in Staggerly's question. Um, Techno Mage T has uh, a number of questions. We asked one before, but he wants to know, Gene, are there still credible CE3 and higher sighting events today? All the big cases I'm aware of, Travis Walton, the Hills, Bud Hopkins cases happened decades ago. Are you aware of any cases like this in more recent memory, or are we back to lights in the sky, orbs, and craft only? Well, there are always lights in the sky all over the place. We see all those pictures of lights in the sky. People see lights in the sky. But at the end of the day, that's what they are, lights in the sky that don't show anything distinct enough to be anything unusual. I think more craft than anything else. Yeah. I don't see that sort of thing happening. It doesn't mean abductions have not been reported. They still are. I know a few years ago on the Paracast, we talked to a guy named Doug who said he had been abducted. And I spent some time on Skype with him. We had a Skype session after that show where I talked to him about an hour or more and was mostly just fleshing out details. And I got the impression it was still something up close and personal. So these things are still being reported, but for some reason they don't get the attention of some of the yeah. older classic so-called cases. Uh, I, I agree with that. I, I do think that there are rare events that do occur. I don't see the kind of frequency that we saw in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, for instance, uh, and with a, a brief resurgence, I think, in the 90s. I think there's, there's kind of a, a symbiotic relationship between um, publicity, notoriety, uh, whether these subjects become more or less socially acceptable. I think your issues around uh, social social relationships and and um, th that I think comes into play. I think when UFOs are not uh, in vogue or it's not uh, you know something that uh, you're going to readily 
hear about in your everyday life. If you have something extraordinary happen, I don't think you're as likely to come forward um, as you would be back in the 90s when the X-Files and and uh, some really cool shows were out there really bringing these subjects to the forefront, making them more acceptable, I think, uh, socially. Uh, generally, the paranormal is a low-status um, social subject, uh, as is, you know, many aspects of the paranormal. These, these tends to stigmatize you uh, to a certain degree. Of course, you and I really don't care about that, but some people do. I've been stigmatized enough. People know I'm crazy, and they accept it. What is surprising is I do a technology show, the Tech Night Out Live, and I do the Paracast with Chris, and I don't think people come to me and say, how could you do both shows? It's never on the agenda. There you go. We're talking shop here this week with Gene and Chris, and the only reason is because you're in the Paracast. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Hi, this this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Final four segments of our shop talk with Gene and Chris. We take stock of the state of the UFO and paranormal fields, and we've spent some time answering your questions, and there's a lot to go here. Some of these questions are really involved require a lot of thought. And what that means is I think we've got the, maybe the best listeners on the planet, really. I agree. It's amazing the questions they come up with. It's amazing the things and the skills they have and the things they know about. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I think we're very, very fortunate to have the quality of thinkers and, and quality of, of participants at forum.theparacast.com. Every time, practically, I go on that forum, I'm going to learn something or uh, be turned on to a link to a story that then intrigues me enough to, to do some additional research. And, and it's just such a valuable resource for anyone that's interested in any of the many subjects that we cover here. And, and uh, I can't thank everybody enough out there for your participation. I have another one from Technomage T., who has uh, been a forum poster for about 10 months. He hasn't posted many messages, but he came out of the woodwork for this uh, episode, Gene. 
Are you aware of any plan or do you have any thoughts on forming an organization to actually make some progress on this topic? We've, we've kind of covered that already. But he says the organization would be a genuine research organization that collects data, analyzes and publishes the data. I think there are a lot of people on this forum who would actually like to use their various talents to furthering this field of study instead of only discussing it. Discussion is good, but research is better. I couldn't agree more. For example, I have a background in IT, databases, software development. Let G know, and we'll uh, we'll start uh, working on the back end of the Paracast Plus software. Get a, a, a view only video stream going of the San Luis Valley Camera Project. We could use your help. And by and, the way, uh, I think the government needs you. The U.S. government yeah. <laughs> needs you for the healthcare.gov <laughs> website. Yeah. It is a mess. It's badly designed. I understand yeah. what they're trying to do, but. Maybe they hired the lowest bidder. I don't know. Maybe nobody wants to do that kind of thing. And maybe yeah. that's one of the reasons. Well, but when whatever. you get the lowest bidder, you get what you pay for. It's usually not the lowest bidder. It's the bidder who sends you the check for the campaign. Well, but it's sure not working. I mean, how can you not be compatible with Safari on Macs? Right now around the world, there are over 75 million Mac users. Wow. That's twice as many as just a few years ago. Yeah. It's astounding. Yeah. As far as an organization, I've done the organizational thing. I don't know if we want to do that, but I was thinking we go back to something you and I were talking about some episodes back about finding a way to fund specific research projects. I don't mean having the monthly magazine and the meetings and the organization, but funding projects to do actual field research, Right. finding a way to raise the money for that. But the only person we know who does that is like a Robert Bigelow. Maybe Paul Allen, one of the co-founders of Microsoft, would do it. Maybe Steve Ballmer. You know, he's leaving Microsoft now. He's worth billions of dollars. Steve, get in touch with us. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people out there with deep pockets that uh, you know you would think might have an interest in furthering our understanding of our place in the in the cosmos here. And I don't mean beaming radio signals, hoping uh, E.T. broadcasts on AM talk radio. Uh, we broadcast think- on AM talk radio, but we're not <laughs> E.T., I don't think. Of course, I'm only no. speaking of myself here. <laughs> well, uh, I, I think I think our listeners get my point on that. Um, John Rayo, of course, has, uh, has uh, sunk a lot of his own money into the Open Minds uh, efforts down there in Tempe. Uh, he has this really cool sort of... I don't know, it's, a, it's like a camera with a radar unit or something that kind of looks like a rocket launcher on the back of a little 4x4. Uh, four, four four. We need more people like Douglas Trumbull and his uh, UFO cat idea of having a, you know, a, a full mobile functioning uh, UFO hard data scientific array on, on wheels, like a Hummer with a roof that opens up and all these... Uh, these telescopes, cameras, and radar units and stuff pop out. I think this is this is a step in the right direction. I agree. Discussion discussion helps further our our understanding. Maybe uh, uh, educate ourselves a little bit with each other. But there's no substitute for hard data research. There, there really isn't. And that's a really good point that TMT brings up. We've got some other questions here. Should should I keep going with these, Gene? Or keep the cards and letters coming? Yeah. <laughs> Well, this one gets into some of the uh, work that I've done here uh, in the last few years on on the on the trickster uh, mechanism, as I, I refer to it. And this comes from uh, Feral Normal Master, our good friend Raid w- Raid Ridsdale, who has been a poster uh, here at the forum.theparacast.com for a couple of years and is very active on the forums. He says he touched on on this in his commentary on the most recent broadcast with David Weatherly, but he's asking. Since I became aware of your work with stalking the tricksters, you've warned against the inhibiting factor of pop culture programming. But even with the more advanced theories out there, if after a period of time there is still no progress being made, will these advanced theories themselves become tomorrow's pop culture programming? That's a really good question, uh, and I'm glad he asked it. I think that obviously there's a possibility that they could, but... But I think people have, uh, if they're not educated and they don't do uh, the, the amount of research and spend the time really bringing themselves up to speed, they're going to be influenced by the media. They're going to be influenced by popular thinking. And until these alternative theories and these uh, new ways of looking um, at the box from outside of the box, until these 
uh, areas uh, become publicized, they become accepted, they become more well-known, I don't think that they're going to be the pop culture paradigm of the future unless one of these theories actually presents some some fruit and uh, presents uh, some you know some motivation to change people's thinking and to attract the media. I, I'm finding now I, I deal with uh, production companies and the media quite a bit and I've recently been getting uh, uh, calls from production companies wanting me to help come up with a, a new and different way of covering these subjects, a way that it hasn't been, you know, just bludgeoned to death, uh, like chasing UFOs and UFO hunters. You know, these types of programs, I mean, you can only cover the old cases so many times uh, before you really kind of run out of steam. And I think, you know, a real cutting edge, uh, working on real time cases, if possible, working on on real you know, late breaking recent events. Uh, I think these types of uh, this type of, of approach, I, I think, is is compelling. And I think that there's a real thirst right now in the production side of the media. They want new ideas. They're really fishing for new and better ways to pull coverage of these subjects forward and uh, to come up with new and different ways to do things. So that's kind of where I'm seeing it right now. I think there is uh, a real need for uh, taking this field forward so that the public has new and different ways of thinking about and looking at these subjects. I Um, think it's doubly important because so many of the people who are interested in UFOs think we're looking for spaceships. And that might be true, but that seems to be numero uno as far as belief systems are concerned, in fact, a recent survey now said that 52% of the U.S. population believes in UFOs being UFOs as spaceships. And I think the biggest problem, the biggest factor here is we have to separate that. We have to go back to, we've got a mystery, we're not sure what it is, but let's look at different theories, not that UFOs are spaceships, how do we tell the people about it? Because that basically leaves us in a state of tunnel vision. Yeah, we're, we're always looking back at in the, the same thing. It's just putting ourselves right back in the box. So I, I think we're we're at a real crucial point right now in how the media is looking at these subjects. I think they've kind of beaten the particular paradigm of how they're uh, approaching these subjects. I think they've sort of beaten this this approach into the ground, and I think they're really ripe right now for new and different uh, approaches and, and innovation in how these subjects are are being examined and then presented to the public. So. I, I, I'm, I'm the eternal optimist uh, when it comes to these uh, sorts of questions, and, and I would really like to think that there's people out there that, that aren't just involved in this to make money, that they're actually involved in this to, to present quality programming and get people educated and, and get them thinking. Uh, I think that that's the important thing, and that should be a, an overriding motivation, ideally. Here's an overriding motivation. We'll explain it to you. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. Neighbors, are you tired of dealing with a slow web hosting provider? Well, check out A2 Hosting and their screaming fast Swift server platform. They even have SSDs that load pages 300% faster than the competition. Ready to give your site a speed boost? Well, tell you what, neighbors, head on over to a2hosting.com. That's A2, that's number two, a2hosting.com. Check out their Prime Hosting account. And get this, neighbors, they're even giving you an exclusive 25% off discount for all our listeners. 25%. And remember, their Guru Crew support team is standing by 24-7, 365 days a year to answer any of your questions. Now, to get the discount, use the coupon code GENE when you check out. Good day. Jim Newcomer from Midas Resources, October 11th, 2013. Gold opened this morning at 1288.70. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1335.60, 660.780 for a half ounce, or 333.90 for a quarter ounce. That's 1335.60, 660.780, and 333.90. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. There is only one detox product that stands out above the rest, Micro Plant Powder, and it's available only at HempUSA.org. Micro Plant Powder does wonders by removing toxins from the body. Detoxification is a vital process that's extremely important for restoring your health. Micro Plant Powder is available in eight different formulations, and we can help you choose the one that's perfect for your lifestyle. Micro Plant Powder is 100% chemical-free, non-GMO, anti-inflammatory, gluten-free, and packaged by hand in BPA-free containers. HempUSA.org wants you to be healthy, and Micro Plant Powder is one of the best ways we know to detoxify your body from head to toe, all for about $10 a month. Take back your life and enjoy living again with Micro Plant Powder. Call 888-910-4367. That's 888-910-4367. Micro Plant Powder, available only at HempUSA.org. These days, so many suffer from heartburn, stomach ulcers, and acid reflux, and most never realize it is the high acidity within the body that causes their discomfort. While selective diet choices can help, AlkaVision Plasma pH drops can really make a change. A few drops added to water can optimize your body's pH level, ridding you of harmful waste and acid, promoting health and restoring vibrance and energy. Healthy pH levels make all the difference. High acidity can also cause depression, insomnia, and irritability. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops bring you vital balance that can be truly life-changing. Alkalizing boosts immune response, reduces headaches and cramping, and even helps prevent bone loss. This is simple science that helps your body do what's natural. Order your AlkaVision pH Drops for just $29.95 at AlkaVision.com, A-L-K-A-Vision.com, or call 800-518-7615. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. It's amazing how many questions we've had from our listeners in the short time in which we announced this episode, which is a talking shop session with Gene and Chris in the PowerCast. Question most recently being about, again, the various theories of UFOs. But I don't know, how do we break the syndrome of it's got to be ET or nothing? Well, that's, that's going to be a tough one. And until we have enough data to support or you know somehow validate that particular foregone conclusion, I, I think it's always going to be there. I think it's it really taps into a, a, a deep part of the collective human psyche to want to be important enough for something out there to come here and be interested enough to to observe us, to interact with us at times. Um, and not and want to, to eat us for lunch. Or, or save us from all our problems, save us from ourselves. I, I really, I think that that's the least likely uh, explanation Right now, I, I think we are dealing with a lot of closed system uh, phenomena. You know, again, that, that really just, I know that rubs uh, many people the wrong way, but I think we should factor out all potential closed system scenarios before we, we jump off planet. I'm not saying that ETs uh, don't exist. There's probably trillions of civilizations or life, uh, different types of life forms out there. But, you know, are we as a primitive, misogynist, violent uh, you know, self-absorbed uh, closed system. Are we important enough for them to come interact with us? Uh, are we somebody's ant farm? Are we some sort of software program by some multi-dimensional fifteen-year-old? I like the last one <laughs> that we don't really exist. We're somebody's software program, <laughs> but that takes us back to the Matrix concept. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe explain some of the anomalies in our reality, which is, of course, 
that the 15 year old's a little bit crazy. But that yeah. almost goes back to what John Keel John said, Keel said is about God, God being a computerized intelligence that is not entirely sane. <laughs> I love that. When I first read it, it really made me scratch my head. The Eighth Tower, I think, is not the book that it's in. Uh, here's another one about the trickster. Um, and this is an interesting question, which I have an interesting answer to. Again, this comes from uh, our, our good friend, uh, formerly known as Spooky Mulder. I touched on this in my commentary in the most recent broadcast with David Weatherly uh, as he starts out his list of questions. He says, if there was a trickster mechanism involved, could it be leading us around by the nose and steering us into dead ends, which may be why we find ourselves going around in circles, because that is the way of the trickster? I absolutely disagree. I think it's the exact opposite. I think we're going around in circles on our own and the trickster's trying to trying to jerk us out of that and topple our, our beliefs and create room for creativity and and for forward progress. Uh, so no, I think it's the exact opposite. If anything, we're leading ourselves around in circles and the trickster's trying to break us out of that. So Chris, the trickster is here to make us think. The trickster, yeah, it's a mechanism of change. It's a mechanism of creativity to create the room within static structures, to topple those structures so that there's room for growth, forward progress, and creativity. Well, as Ray Palmer once said, the flying saucers are here to make us think. Next question. (laughs) Okay. If the trickster mechanism was involved and may be becoming sentient, as you hypothesized, would it not want to be acknowledged? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I would think that it wouldn't want to be acknowledged. I, I think that the the mechanism is is becoming uh, self aware, maybe developing an agenda. But the first thing, if it became self aware, I think the first thing it would realize is it's got to really maintain its invisibility, and uh, so it would be able to more effectively uh, do the things that I just mentioned. That that sort of tricksterish mechanism is you know, thought to be responsible for creating change, toppling static structures. I think anytime you're toppling uh, the status quo, uh, you better be as Teflon-like and invisible as possible or somehow uh, (laughs) there's going to be kind of a backlash or a riptide effect that goes on uh, with a target on, on your backside if you're not careful. So if the trickster is developing some sort of self-awareness, I think it would, would really attempt to hide as, as effectively as it, as it has in this modern world. So you're assuming here the trickster does not now have a self-awareness? Well, again, I, I don't know. Uh, my suspicion is that we are— Well, I thought you talked to the trickster every day. That's why I'm asking. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, that's personifying the trickster. The trickster is more of a mechanism. It's more of a, uh, it's a liminal force, really, I think, that it's kind of a trigger. Uh, and it gets triggered at the proper time to create the change and, and, and room, room for creativity and growth in, within the culture. Uh, you know, and I think uh, the fact that there's so many tricksterish events uh, within the UFO realm, uh, you know, I have been toying around with a, a third stocking book, and, and that would be stocking the UFOs uh, and, and really putting down all the amazing, inexplicable cases that have these bizarre elements to them that just don't make sense. You know, I've mentioned this before on the show. I've had uh, witnesses to uh, UFO events uh, report sightings, report uh, encounters even, but not give me all the details. And then later, after they felt comfortable, they'd say, you know, I was going to tell you this when I originally met you and reported this particular event. But if I had told you this then, you probably wouldn't have believed me and you wouldn't have taken me seriously. And then they'll they'll mention something that just is just like makes you scratch your head and go, what? You know, I could pull out a bunch of examples on that one. But uh, moving right along, I, I really think that this is a very fruitful avenue of inquiry. I think, you know, the inexplicable nature of many of these uh, so-called paranormal events is important. Not enough attention and, and study and thinking, I think, has been applied to these elements. That's what I attempted to, to accomplish with, with the Stalking the Trickster book, is get people thinking that maybe there is an interconnectedness between divergent and seemingly unrelated paranormal phenomena. And that, that leads me to uh, one of our questions here. Uh, this one, again, is from TMT, Technomage T. You both seem to think that the UFO phenomenon can't be easily explained by the ET hypothesis. 
What evidence do you have that the anomalies you're aware of have anything to do with the UFO phenomenon? In other words, could it be the classic UFO nuts and bolts sightings and encounters are ETs while the other strange things, Bigfoot apparitions, high strangeness events are completely unrelated? After all, we live on a strange planet. It's our strange planet. <laughs> he says there may be a, lots of independently strange things going on. And, and I, I agree. I agree with that. But I think that there is a reason why these seemingly unrelated types of phenomena, why they appear to manifest where they do to the persons or witnesses that they manifest to, uh, the timing of these events. I think that there is some sort of underlying connection that may, in one sense, be the trickster mechanism or some sort of subroutine that's operative. Uh, I've always had that, that feeling of interconnectedness. Sure, we could have uh, independent uh, types of phenomenal events occurring, and they may be unrelated. Uh, the evidence would suggest that. We don't have any evidence to suggest otherwise. But I just have always had that intuition, that sneak and hunch, that there is on some level a connection between many of these events. But the key is to look at both possibilities, whether yeah. they are connected or not. If you dismiss one out of hand, you're not doing a full investigation. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com Hello, I'm Steve Shank. Everybody's heard the statement that what you don't know can't hurt you. But truth is, what you don't know is the only thing that can hurt you. For example, you might not know how our country's wars can hurt you. Japanese radiation and the Gulf oil spill are destroying your seafood. People don't understand how America's 50-year worst drought is hurting them. Our natural disaster experience has proven relief organizations can't take care of the victims. And there's the huge question of how the government will feed all the people that it's promised to feed with no food. What if we made the whole country into one big neighborhood where we take care of each other by taking care of ourselves? Here's the plan. For every new EPAC 60-day food supply that you order, eFoods Direct will send a 7-day food supply to each of two families in your name, free of charge. Go to eFoodsDirect.com or call 800-876-0871. 800-876-0871. eFoodsDirect.com to thank you for being a loyal listener, we have a limited time freebie offer for you. Claim your free heirloom tomato seeds, just pay shipping, right now at 123freeseeds.com. These aren't ordinary seeds. These are heirloom, non-genetically modified super seeds that are open pollinated and can be grown, harvested, and replanted endlessly. These survival seeds are actually more valuable than gold in a crisis. Go to 123freeseeds.com and you can get an airtight storage packet of 150 super seeds free while supplies last to say thank you for being a loyal listener. First come, first served. Just cover shipping. Go to 123freeseeds.com now to see if your free heirloom seeds are still available. That's 123freeseeds.com. 
My name is Josh. One World Way is the best in the market, hands down. I'm in the U.S. Navy, and I live a very active lifestyle. Being a vegetarian, it's hard getting all the protein I need. I tried the vegan protein powders, and I just wasn't feeling any change. The Meathead Supplement Store whey protein kind of worked for a bit, but it left me feeling bloated, and my digestion seemed to slow down. By some divine stroke of luck, I heard a commercial of One World Way on the radio, and it struck my interest. I have to tell you, I am so glad I got it. I have been taking it for a week, and the results are amazing. I don't feel tired when I have to get up at 4.30 a.m. I look and feel better. I recover faster from my two workouts a day. When I don't have time to eat good food, I take it, and I don't feel the urge to stuff my face for hours. I got up this morning, and I looked the leanest I've looked since high school. I can go on and on. The best I can do to repay you is buy more and tell my friends. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWHEY.com. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. With Gene and Chris on the Paracast, we are taking a bit of a break from our regular roster of guests and listener roundtables to present a Talking Shop episode. We talk about the plans for the Paracast, the future, the past, about a possible Paracast UFO paranormal conference, and we're answering your questions. And they are really fascinating questions. Chris, you got a couple more? I do. This comes from Polterwurst, who's one of our uh, prolific posters at forum.theparacast.com. He's been uh, part of the family here for a couple of years. And uh, he says, Chris, what happened to your idea of interviewing a psychic on the show or do a kind of on-air experiment with her? He says, I guess that was a woman that you'd been working with. What about that bad feeling you had about this summer? I mean, for you to mention that several times, it must have been quite unnerving and not just some normal, unspecific anxiety about the future. Well, let me let me deal with this two-part question uh, this way. First of all, I, I do think that this idea of of doing a live experiment with a psychic is a good one, and I do have someone in mind for this. So this is something, thank you for reminding me, I, I really should contact her and we'll set up a way for people to be able to call in during the taping so that we can go ahead and, and get a sense of how accurate uh, her alleged psychic abilities are. And I've seen her in action, so I I, I do personally feel that there's something there. And uh, she's very well considered uh, by her clientele, very faithful clientele that she's had uh, in some cases for many years. So that's a, that's a good idea. Thanks, uh, PW, for uh, reminding me. I'm going to give Narupa a call and let's line that up, Gene. As I- far as the bad feeling that you're, as you call it, about this summer, I, I think what you're referring to is when we were talking about the 2012 and you know, the alleged end of the Mayan, you know, Bakhtun and all that. And I was making the comments that I doubt anything was going to happen uh, around that December 12th, uh, 21st time period. I said, if the trickster's involved, it's probably going to happen when we're least uh, expecting it. And I went against my own dictum of never prophesizing or predicting <laughs> by saying that it, it would probably be sometime in the the late, I think I said late summer. Um, possibly early fall. Well, we're past that time period, so call me Ed Dames if you want. But uh, I just have a sense that uh, we've got something coming down the pike, and it's it may be involved with this uh, current budget crisis with the government. Maybe that's going to be a linchpin to really start a ball moving. But I do have a sense that uh, that we're going to be seeing some real interesting times coming up here. It's that old, you know, alleged Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. Well, <laughs> I think we do. And and uh, I just have a sense that, uh, you know, there's kind of a psychic holding of the breath going on right now and and uh, collectively. And it'll be interesting to see how uh, a lot of these uh, things play out socially, politically, um, militarily. Uh, and, and maybe nature might uh, chime in and give us something else to think about. So what do you think, Gene? I think you've summed it up. Wow. Leave it at that. Let's go to the next question. Okay. I think we pretty much hit them all. As you were talking, a plane is passing over this studio. I wonder. It's not a black helicopter, folks. It's a plane. I've never seen a black helicopter. But you have, haven't you, Chris? 
I was reported as as uh, actually I was I was flying the thing uh, when it was reported as a black helicopter uh, harassing a herd of cattle in the San Luis Valley. I was in the midst of a photographic trip around the valley in a dark purple two man helicopter, and uh, the pilot let me fly it back from Monta Vista about fifty miles or so back to to Crestone and. I was kind of zooming around and, you know, I dive bomb a couple of herds and evidently the rancher saw me and he called the sheriff and, and the sheriff and two deputies raced out in their squad cars and tried to tried to follow me as I headed northeast and they, they were unable to keep up with me because I was flying in a straight line and they were having to do all the, you know, the 45 degree uh, turns around ranches and stuff. And the next day, the <laughs> Rocky Mountain News had an article <laughs> <laughs> mysterious black helicopter or you know harassing cattle herds in Monta Vista or something and <laughs> oh I, I just I got such a kick out of that uh yes Gene I have seen black helicopters uh, I wanted to ask you though before you answer that question when you flew this helicopter do you have a pilot's license no I didn't uh he he said uh oh, just keep your feet off the rudders uh, off the pedals and you can go ahead and just use the the stick and and fly it, and he kind of watched me like a hawk when I started out, and he saw that it was flying a helicopter is actually very easy. It's landing and taking off that's difficult. It's the hovering, and uh, and being able to operate the rudders. That's that's where the real skill comes in. Once you're flying and, and moving forward, it's it's fairly easy to operate. Anybody can do it. Uh, uh, but choosing to to fly down and swoop down on cattle herds was probably not the best idea in the midst of a cattle mutilation wave. <laughs> we could have taken a you know, a 30 odd six round through the canopy or something. Uh, I didn't even think of that at the time, but uh, boy, somebody called me and said, Whoa, there was a black helicopter chasing cows uh, yesterday. And all of a sudden I realized, Oh my God, that was me. <laughs> Do you ever think that maybe some of these other black helicopter reports are just people flying around doing their thing? I think so. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of misinterpretation of of some of these choppers. And, and again, we have to realize that any dark colored helicopter seen against the blue sky is going to appear black. So that's a bit of a misnomer. Uh, there are black helicopters. Um, I've seen extremely dark green helicopters that have black lettering on them so that they appear to be black and unidentified. Uh, there are some military choppers with that color scheme. Uh, I have seen true black helicopters, though. I, I have seen them. Uh, and I have tons of reports in my, my book coming up. It's just filled with report after report after report of choppers uh, shooting at ranchers, choppers stealing pigs, choppers uh, supposedly involved in in weird overflights of uh, some of the missile silos up in Malmstrom Air Force Base uh, in Montana, for instance. Um, we've had reports of fleets of helicopters seen around areas where cattle uh, have been reported in a, in a disfigured, mutilated style condition, whatever. So uh, it's it's an ongoing, you know, theme in the book is 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 these helicopter reports and and to actually have uh, to take fire from one of these as a rancher. I, I had no idea that uh, cases like that existed, and and there have been uh, literal, you know, gunfights, uh, shots exchanged uh, from ranchers on the ground and and. And helicopters. So once you look at all this uh, information about the tie-in with uh, helicopters and, for instance, the the cattle mutilation phenomenon, it really starts to make you think that maybe there's something going on that's uh, not ET involved. That's not uh, uh, that's something much more down to earth, uh, homegrown, and funded with your tax dollars uh, potentially. So that's one area that uh, I think. Some researchers who really want to tout the uh, the ET uh, as the mutilating uh, force uh, in these cases, uh, they tend to discount and sort of throw out that whole data set. And unfortunately, you can't. And as my book will show, this is an ongoing feature of this particular mystery. And there's hundreds, hundreds. Uh, I, I would say close to 400. We're well above 300, probably around 350 potentially even even higher than that. Uh, real good documented reports of helicopters seen in and around cattle mutilation sites. Do you think that large businesses are trying to put smaller ranchers out of business? I do. So that's part of it. It's agribusiness is fighting back to get the competition to give up the business. 
Well, isn't it interesting that many of the the areas of, of real high incidence uh, are now out of business? These small ranches are out of business, and in, in the place of them are these huge uh, super industrialized feedlots. Uh, if you look around Greeley, Colorado, areas of Kansas, areas of uh, Texas, where these uh, large industrialized operations uh, are, is where there used to be. Uh, a lot, thousands of small ranching operations. Eighty percent of the ranches that were in operation in the seventies are out of business now. That's oh just- boy, we can look at a conspiracy theory just about that alone. Yep. Christopher O'Brien telling you more about this book called "Stalking the Herd" with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. If you want to get your website online and you need reliable service, first-class service at the lowest possible price, there's only one place to go. Well, DreamHost has a special promotion with our show where they'll offer you unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, one-click web apps such as WordPress, 24-7 support. You can save over $55. You want to know how? Go to DreamHost.com slash radio, DreamHost.com slash radio. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. When the day comes where the world changes forever, Forever. you can be ready at a moment's notice. With Survivalist Camps, the ultimate fully functional off-the-grid survival bug-out house that's completely mobile and ready to go. All the comforts of an RV, but custom-built to outlast any other trailer. Learn more at survivalistcamps.com. Due to overwhelming response, limited inventory is available. Be ready with survivalistcamps.com. Survivalist Camps, providing your basic needs to survive. What if you had a witness everywhere you drive? Now you can with VideoDashCam.com. From truckers to motorcyclists, the handy Video Dash Cam can be used for insurance claims, accidents, police encounters, road rage, or natural disasters. Has instant screen playback and optional night vision. Get the best quality, affordable HD Dash cameras available at VideoDashCam.com. That's VideoDashCam.com. Or call 855-855-2022. Always have a witness with Video Dash Cam. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy bodies. Products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Hi, my name is Scott Fuchs, teacher and rowing coach for over 14 years. I was sluggish, overweight, on prescription drugs, and only 30-something. Fortunately, I was referred to Dr. Z, and happy to say Dr. Z's all-natural protocols over a consistent course resolved my health issues. I'm in the best shape of my life, and most importantly, on zero medications. I'm Dr. Zdanowski, author of Evology, trained as a primary care physician, surgical manipulation under anesthesia, Expert in nutrition, diet, weight loss, immune system, and I specialize in chiropractic. My 15 years of professional experience has taught me the four keys to vibrant health, a balanced muscular skeletal system, an integrated nervous system, a flowing lymphatic system, and a body filled with over 90 essential nutrients. This has been a secret too long. Actualize your potential, reverse disease. Call me, Dr. Z. 
201-945-1177, evolveyourself.com. Hi, this is Don Ecker, and you are tuned into the Paracast. Let me tell you what, you're going to hear stuff here that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Hear that, George Snorri? With Gene and Chris in the Paracast, we've come to this. We're talking about the possibility here that maybe some of the things seen in connection with cattle mutilations, it's large industries hiring hitmen, cattle hitmen, to do this, to fly around their helicopters. But you saw black helicopters, Chris O'Brien. Tell us more. Well, um, there have been uh, a number of incidences which appeared to be uh, uh, black helicopters unmarked, um, especially down in the around the border area between Colorado and New Mexico. I've had a, a number of, of sightings uh, of these types of, of of you know mystery helicopters, for lack of a better term, down there. Uh, oftentimes you see them, uh, from a distance, uh, and if you're lucky enough and they fly uh, closer to you, you know, I always have binoculars with me. I'm, 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 I attempt to scope them out. I saw in one case, uh, a helicopter that had smoke glass windows, which, uh, I think is pretty rare. You don't see that very often. And it was a shiny black, you know, it was a, it was a Black Hawk, uh, actually a uh, helicopter and it had smoke glass, uh, windows and, and a windscreen. So they're out there, what they're up to, who's operating them, who's responsible for them, who's tasking them, uh, is still, I think, uh, up in the air. And I, I don't want to spoil too much of, uh, some of the conclusions that I'm going to be presenting in the book, but they're just absolutely directly tied in with this whole mystery. And, you know, I don't care how many theories you come up with, you can't throw those hundreds and hundreds of reports out with the baby. Uh, it, it just, it's doing yourself a disservice if you're really serious about unraveling this mystery without sounding like I'm on some, some sort of soapbox here or self-promotion tour. Um, That'll it, come later. Yeah. <laughs> this, this book is really going to make some people think about it. Let's put it that way. Just because something is strange doesn't necessarily mean... It has to be paranormal. And I think one of the big things about this field is we have to get rid of the stuff that has no paranormal aspect. Not that it's not a mystery and that's not important. Certainly, cattle mutilations, even if it has nothing to do with ET or interdimensional phenomena or anything like that, is important as long as we look at the impact to society, to the industry. Very important. It doesn't have to be paranormal. And once we get rid of all the non-paranormal stuff, we still have lots of wacky things going on that we have to try to understand. And the question we keep asking ourselves is we have all these great investigators. We mentioned them earlier in the show. We have a number of really top-notch investigators who are considering all sorts of interesting possibilities. They're trying to figure out what's going on. They're trying to figure out why it's going on. And at the end of the day, as we go to the final part of this show, is there any way we can possibly look for an end game? I don't think so. I think that the UFO field remains stuck in a rut. It's still doing the stuff that it was doing back in the 1950s. The UFOs are ET. The government has guilty knowledge. Let's get disclosure and sit back and we'll know what's going on. We don't need to prove anything because the government will come to our rescue. And as we know, the government is not very good about coming to our rescue very often. They can't even come to their own rescue. There is that. <laughs> yeah, well, I just hope that this thing gets funded real quick and we, uh, you know, we get back to business as usual, com- you know, compounding our debt because uh, it's, really, it's really kicking my tail not having that park open. And, and it's really, it's taking... Uh, you know, it's it's really hurting me personally to not have that park open. And I know many of the businesses around the national parks are really hurting right now. And it's just, uh, you know, when you hear stories of people just driving by, trying to slow down to see Mount Rushmore and they're, and they're, they're hustled on their way uh, by park officials uh, not to stop or, 
or they're spending more money chasing people away from uh, some ocean uh, national uh, parks and monuments down in Florida. They're spending way more money just keeping people away than they would if they were paying people to have the place open. So there's a real penny-wise, pound-foolish uh, scenario going on here. And a lot of people are going to – if this continues, a lot of people are going to be hurt, and this country's uh, credit rating is going to be severely impacted. And they, they better get their proverbial uh, – Murde together. Well, as we talk, by the way, this may be partly resolved. There's talk of a temporary increase in the debt ceiling. So let's not get too far into it because what we say is going to be outdated by the time our listeners get to hear this show. Yeah. But we see how it's affecting everybody. But it also goes to show that if the government is this incompetent, and it's not just now, wherever you look, there's always been bureaucratic waste, incompetence, whatever. How can we possibly expect the U.S. government or any of the foreign governments to have guilty knowledge about UFOs and other paranormal mysteries and to have been able to keep those secrets for all these years? How could they keep the secret about the Roswell wreckage? How could they keep any of this stuff a secret if they just can't even get out of their own way? I think that's one of the biggest things that people who believe that have not answered. How do you take an incompetent government and assume they are competent in one area, UFO secrecy? No. Yeah, good point. It's never going to happen. No. I also think that if any answers come from the UFO field, it won't be because we wait for the government to give it to us. It is because individual investigators will get together finally and figure out ways to investigate what's going on and look for answers wherever the mystery takes them. Yeah. Don't assume it's going to take you to any particular place, like E.T. or whatever, or interdimensional manifestations or crypto-terrestrials. Don't assume anything. As soon as you assume something, you're going to basically put yourself in a box. Yeah. And we've been in a box so long, you understand why I also wrote this newsletter item about whether the UFO field is toxic. Why? You look at all the chatter online about what's going on, especially by true believers of one sort or another. We look at the arguments. I know there's some people out there who don't like what we do at the Paracast. So they have editorials complaining about us. They have blog entries complaining about us. Really? Yeah, there are a few of those out there. I know that Ufology, one of our regular forum posters at forum.theparacast.com, mentioned that. And he said, you know, some of those things are exaggerated. Some of those things are just not true. We're not them. But we're just trying to figure out what's going on. And we hope people will join with us. And if you disagree with us, please don't be disagreeable. It doesn't take us anywhere. Maybe flame wars are good to get that traffic. They want to get all that Google AdSense dollars. To their site. They figure if they start an argument, maybe you or I will go to their site and we'll start a big flame war. On a limited basis, I visited a few of those sites and tried to talk sense to them, then realized that they don't care what you say. They have their own agendas. And that's why, for example, we don't mention a lot of the other shows. You know, we're happy that people are in this field. They have a sincere interest to put on a radio show, whether it's commercial or a podcast or something. That's fine. You know, more power to them. But when they are simply becoming the problem, I prefer they get out of the way. No. Just get out of the way. No. You know, let the people who are trying to sincerely discover what's going on, let them do it. Chris, before most people listen to the show, you'll be on your way to Minnesota. And before the next show, you'll be doing a presentation. Tell our listeners briefly what that's all about. Well, I've been working uh, on, I'm starting to work on my photographs for the book, and uh, it's a perfect opportunity for me to uh, create a Stalking the Herd uh, PowerPoint presentation and uh, start to devise a, a presentation around the material that I've, I'm going to be presenting uh, in the book. And so I'm going to be covering uh, the new book, and I've been collecting, you know, over the years, uh, many wonderful pictures that relate to the information, and it's not all dead cows, believe me. So I'm, I'm going to be uh, covering the material in the new book. That's going to be fascinating. Wish I could go there, but you'll tell us about it later when you get back. The book is Stalking the Herd from Adventures Unlimited Press, coming probably in November at this point, I think. End of the month, yeah. Okay. 
Chris can also be found at OurStrangePlanet.com because The Strange Planet, and he's got a lot of good entries and discussions and investigations there. You can find us on Twitter, where we are known as The Paracast. We are The Paracast on Twitter. There's also a Paracast fan club on Facebook. In fact, there are two. And someday, someone will show us how to make it one. It's going to happen one of these days. But right now, this has been our Shop Talk episode for the fall of 2013. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast. <laughs>